we're here. We're here. Let's we're here. We did it. it. We did yeah, it. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm man. so happy you're here. Yeah, man. Michael yeah, man. K. How do you pronounce your last name, actually? So that's just, that's just sort of my creative alias. Yeah. But my, my, my real name is Long. Oh, for real? So my last name is Long, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, well, either way, you're just you're just Mike K to me. Every right. time we every time <laughs> right. I talk about you with anybody, you're just Mike K. Oh, Mike right. K from Tampa. Yeah, right. absolutely. It's the power of branding. Yeah, that, ex- <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Creative Locker Podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you for being here. For and sure. you came up from Tampa. Yeah. Super thankful for you to come up. Was it the Tom Brady Rogers game, or was it a Jag? Did you come up to a Jag game first, or did I came I, up to a Jag game first? Okay, we met first at a Jag game. Okay, first that and then I saw season. you probably a few weeks later at a yeah. Tampa game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and you like and you you love it you love shooting the Buccaneers I do man I do and it, it, it's weird because I, I grew up you know living around the area my, my dad's from St. Petersburg and we lived in the Bay Area for a lot of my childhood so um it's just weird sort of being on the field in Raymond James and like yeah. all these things I sort of like um idolized as a kid yeah. looking up at the Super Bowl banner and, yeah and seeing some of the guys that I watched and like, you're from you know, that area right yeah, you're yeah, kind of yeah. you're from that born area. born in Miami, yeah. but so lived, spent that, a lot of time was in the it Bay Area. The yeah. 2001 Super Bowl, the Super Bowl team. That's right. Yeah, yeah, watching them win the Super Bowl. Seeing Warren those guys Sapp, on the baby. Sideline. Yeah, Warren Sapp, Derrick yeah. Brooks, and Mike Allstar. So it's been a cool experience, man. Yeah, for the books. So. And then you got to cover, of course, all of Tom Brady's seasons. Or were you with the yeah. Dolphins, or were you with the Bucks the whole time? I was with the, with the I was with the Dolphins my first season as, okay. as the LCC, and then the second season was Tom Brady's uh, last season. Oh, so your first season. Was the just the last season that you're that, yep. that Tom was playing? My first season with the Bucks, which yeah. is uh, which was either way, even yeah. though he didn't go far in the playoffs, got yeah. booted by the Cowboys, and that was his outing. Yep. Either way, though, yep. that was still so epic yeah. to see him there just yeah. here in Florida, living there, Tampa. Yep. So, so epic. I was actually when they hit me up to uh. They had, and that was season one for me. That was yeah. my first season yeah, as an LCC. Okay. Yep. So, and it was only like week four, the yep. uh, Packers versus Brady, yep. or Rodgers versus Brady in Tampa. Mm-hmm. And they asked me, uh, I don't know if they knew from my Instagram that I was just mm-hmm. a huge Tom Brady fan. Like, yeah. I love Tom Brady, right? Yeah. And uh, I don't know who was who was paying attention, but maybe it was just the fact that I wore a Brady shirt. All I have a Brady yeah. brand shirt that nice. I bought right when he like dropped it. Nice. Maybe they just saw it. I don't know. And they, they asked me if I wanted to go to the uh the Packers at Bucks and I said I said who do I need to buy a bottle of champagne for right, like, right, right. that I get to go shoot the goat oh my right, gosh right, and right. I, I'm super grateful for that and then uh that was my second time seeing you yeah and yeah. then I know you came up to another Jag game this past season right yep yep mm-hmm. you were at one more so I know we've worked three games together I did the but now uh, four de facto did a de facto AFC uh South championship game that's right when they got the scoop yeah, score for, no, the, for the win that's right I did that no one, yeah. you, the playoff game yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah, absolutely yeah. and uh that was a good night yeah that was a good night yeah. and then we just both we're at the Pro Bowl. I see you're wearing your Pro Bowl hat. Yeah, mine's yeah. mine's over here in my little collection. Yeah, um, that was super fun. I know that was super fun for us to get yeah. to go to the Pro Bowl. Definitely honor to be selected and go to the Pro Bowl, mm-hmm. even if you know we're not always in the favorite spots. Things right. that we wish we could be. Still right. grateful to be there. Right. Have the opportunity. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, being at LCC is a uh, it's it's a really really niche specific job. Yeah, and a lot of people that. Uh, wanted, I don't think they quite understand exactly what it is. Right. And, uh, you know, not that I'm going to get into anything like uh, too personal when it comes to the job aspect of what we do, but what are your thoughts about being in LCC? What do you like about the job? And uh, are you, are you like me and just, I mean, I I would go shoot the games for free. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I would, I don't even need to clock in, but what are your feelings on being in LCC? Mm -hmm. How long you've been working for the NFL and what it's like in your, in your position to do this exact same thing I do a little bit more South. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no better way to me than to be at the stadium early. Like you said, if I was, if I was a fan, um, going to games, I'd go to the games three hours early and just sit in the stadium and watch it fill up and watch the energy and the excitement build Mm -hmm. and, and you know so the smell of the popcorn is electrifying just, it's, feeling it's it's amazing man it is mm-hmm. there's no better way to spend your sunday and, and the fact that you get to go and and do what you do what you love and watch the game that you love yeah. you know loving being a creative and just capturing content it's, it's it marries those those two things perfectly but my experience being LC, being an lcc has been been amazing i've been to um all the different markets in in, in florida been able to mm-hmm. shoot at all those different stadiums and and uh, see all the different the differences in the, in, in the crowds and the fan bases yeah. and the players and just the culture 
and the, just the culture of the teams. It's, yeah. uh, it's one thing that I noticed the most. Like the Jags have a very specific <laughs> culture to the people that go and and, 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 uh, and attend Duval. the game. Right, the Duval no, chant, they're crazy, bro. And, and they, they jumping get in the pool. Yeah, yeah, crazy. It, it, it's amazing, and, yeah. and you just sort of juxtapose that to, to Tampa mm-hmm. and uh, and Miami. Oh, dude, Tampa fans are wild. Yeah, and yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. to a few games, not just well, I've been to one game as a shooter. Mm-hmm. That game, uh, Rogers Brady, but I've been to a couple of Tampa games just as a fan. Like we mm-hmm. went to see Tom Brady play yeah. as fans, um, even though I'm a diehard Jag fan, and then. Uh, we went this year on Christmas Eve. That was my Christmas oh, that's right. present. That's right. That's right. I came to the game to watch that's the right. Jags play Baker. Yeah. And they annihilated. Didn't go quite as. Yeah, it as was it so quite. brutal. Yeah. yeah. I actually, we left like somewhere in the fourth quarter and I had it on the phone. Yeah. And like, uh, he, uh, I think Trevor threw an interception right mm-hmm. at the end. And I was just like heartbroken yeah. leaving the game. I was like, yeah. it's Christmas. Like, yeah. this is so, it hurts my emotions when you <laughs> right. really love a team that much. Now, right. you know, talking about favorite teams. So, yeah. You grew up. You said you grew up uh, around there. So the Bucks yeah. are your. That's your connection. Your team. That's the team that you Not, grew up no, loving. So, or so a I'm. Different a, I'm one. actually a Lions fan. Oh, see, hitting me yeah. from left field. There. Yeah. So You're I a mean, Lions fan. So the Bucks used to be in the NFC Central, right? And the Lions were in that same division. Okay. So a lot of those games were broadcast in Florida, mm-hmm. and during that time, that was Barry Sanders' heyday. So mm-hmm. I fell in love with Barry Sanders. I, I wanted to be oh, like. Man. When I when I played football, I wanted to be Barry Sanders. Yeah. Just everything about him, his demeanor, the way he approached the game, the creativity on the field. Yeah, you know his lateral movement, his quickness, mm-hmm. uh, and it just it just his humility. And like I fell in love with his whole story. So you're a fan so, of you. You became such a fan of this one player, right? And then me and you, which we talked about just a few minutes before this podcast, we're yeah. actually about the same age. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. you were using him on video games back in the day, yep. just like I was excited to play with like John Elway on yep. NFL Blitz, 1998, exactly. 1999. Exactly. Yeah. Sick. So I was so I was so committed yeah. to just it, it became bigger than just him. Like I, I fell in love with just the whole culture, the whole of the culture Lions. of the yeah. Lions, the colors and yeah. every and sort of everything about it. And yeah. um, I got some Lions friends. I got some yeah. Lions fans friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. One of the bands I had tour with, they uh, the singers. They're or they're all from Detroit. Oh. And nice. the singers of the band, uh, they're huge Lions fans. Like he'll wear a Lions jersey on tour on stage. Like he's a big That's Lions sweet. fan. So you're a Lions fan, yeah. but you're also now a Bucks fan because right. you're so connected to them you're there exactly. and when you're there spending time with them in person it's different it's hard yeah. not to become a fan right you get it's to hard. know you're the around that logo yeah. Yeah. so much the culture mm-hmm. you become part of the culture so you can yeah. be like i'm a detroit lions fan because i love barry sanders growing up and right you know but now i'm also a Tampa bay buccaneer fan because yeah. i feel like i'm part of that organization exactly yeah exactly. you get to know the people in the organization yep. from the security guards they yep. dap you up when you yep. walk in every yep. morning yep. to the the players they sort of acknowledge they start you to and recognize you and right, you're, you're right. part of you're part of the family right you're part and of that it, and whole every football organization is a family yeah it's time. crazy. So you've been sent to Miami to shoot yeah. the Dolphins. You yeah. obviously work for the Bucks, and yeah. we said you've come up to Jacksonville a few times. Yeah. So you shot all three stadiums, yeah. all three teams in Florida, yeah. and me too. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Let's nice. go. Speaking I, of being the LCC, yeah. it's just like all those different um, connections. You talked about the, the mm-hmm. Bucks, the, the Lions. So uh, really cool experiences. The Lions came down to Tampa earlier Re- in the in the year. Yeah, this, this, this season? This, this season, season, yeah, when they were so. really good. Right. And so, so yeah. we like – being a Lions fan, but never having yes. been to Detroit for a game, mm-hmm. um, I don't really see many Lions fans. If I'm mm-hmm. wearing my Lions gear, people stop me in public all the time. And they're like, you're the only Lions fan I've ever seen. In Tampa. Right. <laughs> but to, to see all the thousands and thousands of, of fans um, chanting for the Lions, cheering for them. At the end of the game, everybody came down to the to the mm-hmm. lower mm-hmm. to the lower section, and the fans were like, high five. Like, these them. are like my people. I was like, wow! Like it was it was a great, it was a great experience. It was, it was cool to see. Man. It was like the little yeah. inner child in did me kind of was like really excited. Yeah, yeah oh, they, they won the game, so the did. the inner child was like really really yeah. excited for that moment. It was really you cool. were like a little bit torn, but at the yeah. same time, you were like, nah, nah, nah. Right. I grew up loving this team. I'm stoked right. that they won. Right? No, to see Not them come in and have a game the, the way the way they did, yeah. it was like you know best case scenario. No, like one of the reasons why I want to come on the pod is just because like you talked about, you know, what it takes to be a great LCC. Yeah. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me about you, like, I don't associate myself with just with just anybody. I don't have, you know, just no. relationship with I just understand. anybody. Like, just you're so passionate about what you do, dude. Yeah, like, man. it's really like it's honestly inspiring just to see like how 
passionate you are, how always on target and on point, just super focused you are yeah. about delivering at the highest level, whether yeah. it's for LCC or whatever, whatever else you do. Anything so like that's I one do. thing I, I respect about you, oh man, a thousand percent. I said like you said like yo, let's do the podcast, like let's make it happen, man. No yeah. matter what, and you know this is that. new to me. You yeah. know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There could be a few eyes on this. You yeah, know, it's not even. I just love I love the idea of talking because I talk so much. Right. right. <laughs> and my wife's like, you know, you'd be good at podcasting because right. you don't ever shut up. Right. And I'm like, I need to learn how to I need to learn how to t tone it down a little bit because I right. want to have guests on. I want to let them speak and tell right. their stories. And people right. have heard my story a thousand times, but yeah. I appreciate that so much, dude. For sure, man. I love sure. your energy yeah. and your work ethic. And your work is so fire. Even though I have to be on I have to get on you about posting more. On, on the social, you right. Because man. I can right. I can scroll right. for like one second and I'm at the bottom of your Instagram, right. but I know that you have so much fire so content, much content of the Bucks, Tom Brady, like so yeah. much, and you yeah, should yeah, be yeah, lighting yeah. your social up. But that's a different part of the conversation. Facts, but facts, thank facts. you so much for the yeah, words, man. man. You know that yeah. I I do love yeah. what I do more yeah. than more, except for my wife. I, I love it more than anything, facts. and I just want to uh, be contagious, just yeah. like you said. You know, yeah. I want my energy to just be overflowing out of me to where it pours onto others, and it makes them want to like. And it doesn't even matter if I'm doing this crazy elite job, even if what yeah. I'm doing is not the most fire, like the way I am as a person, Facts. it's so much, it's so important to who you are, not just as like as a videographer or photographer, because Facts. think about how flooded our industry is, Right. you know, there's right, so right, many right. shooters out there. It's yeah. like you connect with a human being, right. you connect with someone with a soul, yeah. you connect with their passion, their, yeah. their energy and what they bring into a room. And mm -hmm. I cannot help who I am. Like yeah. that, I'm just yeah. really hyper. Yeah. Uh, I do drink a lot of coffee but yeah. i'm always locked in on trying to yeah. like uh get something done every day and yeah. my wife and i are filming every day and sometimes yeah. i do get burnt out there's there's definitely plenty of days where i'm not peppy you know go lucky happy a, yeah. a b there's days definitely where i have a lot of anxiety and i'm stressed out and mm -hmm. it takes a lot you know to to make enough money to buy a home in this society yeah. and the, our economy yeah. that we live in. And, yeah. and you know, even it's harder even for you because I know you have children and yeah. I'm not there yet. And, uh, creating content, which we're going to get there, but creating content yeah. for a living is it's, it could be a stressful thing because, uh, you never know how many more years we're even going to be needed before right. AI, especially now, maybe like a few years ago, we were still very confident, but yeah. the, the shit that's coming out now, yeah. it yeah. makes me like, think like, man, we're really going to have to change with the times yep. over yep. the next 10 years yep. or we're fucked. Yeah. Like, or we're not constantly gonna, in the back of my mind. Yeah. yeah the yeah, AI yeah, yeah. is already, I mean, already I'm getting advertised on TikTok these apps yeah. with the AI download this and make your own little AI videos. And I'm yeah. just thinking how far and think about how far we've come in 10 years yeah. where we're going to be in 10 more years. Yeah. So Carly and I are, you know, and I know it's important to be a father. I know it's yeah. important to have a family and have children, but mm. I'm right now I'm on this mindset where it's like, man, we have to try as hard as we can over the next five years yeah. because we don't even know what's going to happen in 10 years Facts. with our technology and, and where we're at in life. And mm -hmm. maybe people will still be getting married and yeah. we'll still be able to make so much money a year, maybe like shooting weddings and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. because AI cannot replace your physical body. Right. They cannot put AI on the field to shoot the players the way right. we do. They exactly. can't put a body at a wedding to shoot a couple getting married. You know what I mean? Exactly. So there are some things that they can't take away. And my energy is one of them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So I want to talk about your background a little bit. Yeah. So I was uh, looking at your social media, yeah. uh, which I've, I've looked at many times, but I never really, I never really just paid attention to that quick little detail where it says, uh, formerly of ESPN, or it says, you, it says something at the top about ESPN. Yeah. Was the other one, what was the other one? Was it CBS? Uh, CBS, Sports. CBS Sports. Tell yeah. me a little bit about your background of what those, you have those in your Instagram profile. Yeah. That's something you're proud of. In yeah. a way, it almost, it comes off almost like a, almost like a trophy. Like I've worked for this company. I'm right. really proud of it. Right. Like a, tell me about it and your background and we'll get in a little later. We'll get into um, your background, maybe a little bit how you started shooting and whatnot, but give me your background of how you got to be an LCC in the NFL right. and tell me about those companies that are in your bio, because that's a yeah. super sick flex. Like yeah. I, I love seeing that. I'm like, damn, he's, he's had a lot of career, even, you know, doing all your own things before you hit the NFL. Yeah, man. So, um, I was um, fortunate enough to have some really cool internships when I was in college. I interned with the Miami Dolphins, oh, sick. Um, their content team. I interned with um, uh, Florida Atlantic with the football team and the athletic department. So I got a chance to travel to all the games and, and sort of be a part of that team. So I knew that I wanted to work in sports and I wanted to work in media and make that come together uh, in, in a way that, that, that let me tell stories and be creative. Um, 
So being a creative has been your passion, yeah, obviously for a long time. When I was a kid, I would walk around yeah. and, and interview my teammates uh, and in little league. And just okay, like, so you do always play sports that, too. You play, yeah, okay. yeah, I played sports all through. My, my dad was big, my dad and uncles, yeah, played football, basketball, oh, everything that I oh. could play, I'd, I'd play. Everything oh, you were, time you were play, athletic. You were in it. I I okay. at least tried. I mean, football was probably my best sport, but yeah. if it, if there was something athletic, there was a ball out there, and yeah. we, kids were outside. You know, being from Florida, always wanted to be outside, always wanted to be playing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, just to backtrack, my, 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 after doing those internships, you know, it's time to start looking for a career post-graduation. Right. And I had a practicum class um, that was once a week. And um, I would get ahead of my work so that I could spend the whole entire period just applying for jobs. So oh, I, would just, I would spend just like, it was a three-hour yeah, class yeah. and I would just get ahead of my work and I would just apply for jobs, like basically two of the three hours and just apply, apply, apply. And um, I got a call from 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 um, somebody at ESPN, and they flew me out for for an interview. And Sick. yeah, and I, I met. So um, like, where did you fly for this interview? Uh, up to up to Bristol, Connecticut. Oh, okay, Connecticut. Okay. Up to Bristol, Connecticut, okay. and I and I wore I wore a suit. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Suited and, up. Yeah. So the former vice president of digital media, his name was Anthony Warmile. He's like super in, uh, influential. Shout in out. How, Every time we yeah. drop a name, we got to yeah. get the shout out. Got okay. a shout out. Uh, okay. Rest in peace, actually. Oh my gosh. And, uh, All right. He was really influential in, in my career. Just taught me a whole lot about. Um, storytelling, connecting with an audience, connecting with people. Um, he actually, I, I walked in for an interview, interview and he like laughed because I had a suit on. He's just like, you know, you're not interviewing to be an accountant or a banker. It's like, what like are you that. doing? Here? Like, this is we, what are you doing? Dressed like this? Right, we're working in sports. Okay, you know what I mean, so so that that became like a little bit of a thing. Yeah, and yeah. then uh, we we connected, and I ended up you know getting the job, and and I picked up everything and moved there. But why that story is important is mm -hmm. because uh, at that time I was fully prepared to graduate and sort of like start my production like start my production company or creative agency or the case may be so i had brought a camera uh, i was ready to just go all in mm. and um but I, I i had to sell my camera to to make my way up there and how old were you at this job. point how old were you exactly at this point i, I was 24. okay so 24 yeah chasing dreams you flew yeah. up there trying to get yeah. this job yeah okay were you thought, already with your your wife were you with your, no. her back okay so you're no. single yeah single mm -hmm. 24 chasing dreams mm -hmm. go on on work uh yeah so like i bought this camera i was ready to, to to go all in but i thought to myself hey like i need to i want i don't i don't want to just understand how to like i already know how to do this i know that i can do this not with my eyes closed but like i have a knack for it i have a yeah. feel for it i want to learn the business and how people leverage creativity to to promote a brand mm -hmm. and i wanted to understand how everything worked how the whole wheel turned mm -hmm. so not just the creative part but like how does the creative work with broadcast work with sponsorships works mm -hmm. for marketing works mm -hmm. advertising i wanted to understand how the whole wheel you wanted works to so. know the whole world right oh, right so like yeah. what better place to do that um than at espn exactly. so like for me it was sort of about it was sort of like a almost like a ma getting a master's degree right it was like going to work for these for these companies because you, you you meet people you meet the ceos mm -hmm. the vice presidents mm -hmm. and you sort of get to pick their brain for a minute you know mm -hmm. you, even even your managers and you just see the workflow yeah. you see the infrastructure you see the organization and and all and how um things trickle down from the top to the yeah. bottom. And so when you see things in person, yeah. you, oh, it's, I still believe that when you see things in person, like, like not the internet is taking over the world. Yeah. When you actually are physically involved in a world and you're seeing it in person, it's easier to learn. Yeah. hundred percent. It's, it's maybe not I don't know, easier, but just hands on. Yeah. You know, learning, yeah. seeing, watching people, watching how they do business and watching how they work and it rubs off on you. And yeah. Yeah. And as somebody like, I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset. So that's always been in the back of, back of my head is like I need to collect gather as much information on the mm -hmm. front end of my career as possible because mm -hmm. I know on, in the latter half of my career I want to build something and myself. do more than one thing right right and just right. be have knowledge when well, knowledge is power right and you want to have knowledge in all these different aspects of content and marketing and all these right. things so how long did you do the was it in, it was an inter job or full-on job so it was a it was a full-time job full-time okay, full -time job full-time job. Full job I worked there in uh, digital media for almost four years Almost four years I was there, uh, and that was that was ESPN or CBS. That was ESPN. ESPN, and then you did you go from there to CBS or yep. why Went CBS from, up there too? You done work. So uh, the the gentleman I mentioned before, yep. uh, Anthony Mormile, he transitioned mm -hmm. from ESPN to CBS he took you to take him. over their digital department, and he I, I was living in Austin working for ESPN okay. e, uh, event production at the time. Okay. So I was working sort of in a truck sick. doing packages and sick. graphics and stuff like that. That's, so, still, that's still sick though. Yeah, yeah, no, like, it was it was fun. I was enjoying sick. myself, yeah. having the time of my life. You know, living in Austin, okay. meeting people, and yeah. And uh, loving making Texas. money, though. yeah, making money, loving Texas. And he gave me a call, and he's like, "Hey, we, but, you know, I'm transitioning over here." And and I mean, it was it was humbling just to get the call from him for him yeah. want for you know want to bring me a, a, to be a part of this new team. So yeah. 
and uh, and I was like, yeah, I'm from I'm from down there, so let's let's do it, you know. Yeah. So um, see, college can still get you into jobs that you want to get into. Oh, one thousand. People, yeah. people yeah. like you can't lean one way or you have to just still be able to see it clearly down the middle yeah. college is for some people yeah college isn't for some people yeah. like me i'm a high school dropout yeah my college was youtube everyone yeah. knows my story i learned yeah. everything i know on youtube but yeah. like someone on the it's fun to talk to someone on the opposite spectrum who mm -hmm. did go to college yeah content marketing we do the same stuff we yeah. have so much in common but our paths are so completely opposite of how we got here and the things that we've done to where yeah. we are now. Yeah. And again, we're about the exact same age almost. Yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. I'm, I have, and you know, you were, you've been doing content for so long. Mm -hmm. So when you were doing that though, I don't even know if I had picked up a camera. Like when you said wow. you were about 24, right? Yeah. And you're, we're both 35. So, yeah. um, we're talking nine years ago, mm -hmm. simple math. AB's mm -hmm. got to do some simple math in his yeah. head right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've only been doing content for, uh, since 2016. Right. So, I mean, I was just another year and I'd be picking up a camera and you're so far into it already. So, I mean, we can ju jump ahead. I had a little bit of notes written for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could jump ahead a little bit. So yeah. like going back a little bit further from there mm -hmm. did you, you picked up a camera at a young age, super young age. How old were you when you first got a camera and started shooting stuff? Oh man, yeah, that's that a good one, a, right? That's a good question. That's a good one. It's like um, the one everyone expects, but yeah. blindsided. Yeah, I think like even when I was younger, like my, my dad was really big on having a camcorder. <laughs> we've got we've got to be thousands of cassette yeah. tapes oh, sick. of different moments, just like kind of like Christmases of those, and stick your hand through. The, yeah, 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 just, yeah. Stick your hand through the loop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Then yeah. Even then, like so so I he was really big on capturing memories and saving them, and my mom too. So um, you know even using the camera then i kind of kind of knew i had a, a feel for it and that picked it, it up as a, at a super young age yeah yeah you just know, shout out to all the dads that yeah, uh yeah, yeah home recordings home videos Hell yeah, had that man. little camera at home Hell some yeah. kids may be like you know that's cool i want to pick it up yeah. maybe some kids not but yeah. shout out to all the dads in the 90s and the, the early 2000s Thanks. that kids are adults now and maybe their dad just was chilling around filming things on a little hand yeah. recorder because yeah. my dad wasn't yeah um they had some disposable cameras that they bought when we went to uh, fucking disney world or something but yeah. like nobody was you know just chilling around the home recorder so shout out to all the dads for recording videos at home, you know, yeah. getting their kids into it, maybe. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, was, I think like, so for me, it was just like, Stuart Scott was my guy. Like that was okay. like the person, like one of the people that I sort of like looked up to. And I was like, yeah, I could be, you know, one of those people that are on TV and, and interviewing the players yeah. and things like, so I knew I wanted to be in broadcast yeah. in TV doing something creative, mm -hmm. and, but I, I didn't quite know it was going to be actually shooting actually shooting that's yeah. like i went into i mean in your mind it could have been anything yeah whether you were the guy next to the player holding the microphone yeah. with another with the news uh or someone like espn filming it yeah. or whether you're actually behind the big massive camera yeah. shooting it either way you just knew you had a, a frame of mind you knew that you wanted to be in that world right and it's right. a great place to start it's a great place to to start you know the journey yeah. you know any foot in is a foot into the oh, industry yeah. you know oh, what yeah. i mean so do you remember what your first camera actually was what was the first camera that michael purchased that I purchased, it, yeah. it was it was a Canon. I can't remember. It was a Canon. Okay. It was a Canon. I'm sure it was just like exactly what maybe it like was. a Rebel or something. T1I. Something. Or something like, 70D. I think, I, think I might have spent like 1,200 bucks on okay. it back okay. back in the day. So our first Canon was only 800 bucks. Yeah. I totally yeah, feel yeah. Like. Some, it. Something. Something. Something like in that. In fact, like I used to when I first got into, it, I'd look at the cameras at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, let's just buy one of these. Nah. Yeah. 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 So I um after you know I went through you know producing and being sort of on the studio side and the event side and. Uh, the digital side um and then i believe in 2018 okay 20, 2017 mm -hmm. i believe i made a commitment that i was gonna start start shooting, shooting again so, so so your first like actual camera purchase wasn't until you were fully grown been yeah. through all these jobs yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah. though you're in content yeah. you probably shot on other cameras yeah. plenty of times you've already learned yeah. you already know s settings you yeah. already understand videography yeah. so that was kind of my next question was like yeah. were you ever into photography and taking pictures or was it kind of video your whole path video was pretty much my whole path right. i kind of had had a, a great respect for photography but i mean had they never, go they yeah. go kind of hand in hand yeah, like definitely. if you understand your shutter your ISO, your aperture on video yeah. you understand those same exact rules and, mm -hmm. and ideals applied to photography exactly you know that already exactly yeah, yeah. so i i, I kind of video was like sort of my first love but then i always sort of for photo was right there and i was like it, it makes sense for me to just learn it because yeah. i just kind of looked like you said i looked at how the 
landscape of the industry was changing and, and you have to be able to do everything even right. like sort of nowadays you have to be able to do graphic design and photo oh and video and so many things you got to be able to do everything you got to so be able like, to be yeah. a hybrid in right. this world today because right. and, and i talk about that a lot with shooters like uh a lot of photographers and they're scared mm -hmm maybe to get into video. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I just want you to know, mm -hmm. as cutthroat as I can be, yeah. if you don't start shooting video, yeah. you're never gonna make enough money. Yep. Unless you become a photographer yep. that is like a like like a legend, like or maybe mm -hmm. like a full-time, like maybe you become a team photographer of sports is your thing, mm -hmm. or you're just a wedding photographer, and it's really hard to book full-time weddings, just photos. Mm -hmm. A lot of couples wanna book the, the video the photo package. kind of packages, yeah. Yep. And then also, unless you become like a legend, like, like Logan Boyles mm -hmm. or Perry Knotts, like mm -hmm. one of these legend guys, Aaron Doster, all these legends that their whole job is taking pictures. Yeah. And there's a fully an industry that you can make it, now yeah. it's really hard. Yeah. Uh, but if you're a hybrid shooter, you stand, I mean, double the chance right. to make to make money. Double and the opportunities to make money. Exactly. Yeah. And what's this world? I mean, this world right now, we're all just trying to make money yeah. and survive exactly. in this world. You know, a lot of gigs that I that yeah. I take, it's like it's it's a plus that I can come and tell, hey, I can yeah. do your photo, I can do your video, yeah. I can do your social media, I can do. So even though you don't shoot photo like a lot full time, though, you're mm -hmm. still fully knowledge on how to do it. Yeah. You still get it done if you get hired. Hey, can you use yeah. photography? Of course you can. One thousand percent. Yeah. Heck yeah. So and speaking of your fire work, yeah, you make kids look like they're absolute legends, like rock stars. Like kids are obviously full of energy and they look yeah. awesome, but a lot of your work right now that I've seen a lot of stuff lately, you're very heavily into NFL flag, yeah. uh, which if people don't know what that is, it's every city has a lot of, you know, kids kind of on a, kind of attached to each team organization yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, is part of NFL flag. Mm -hmm. And um, I've done a lot of work for like the Jaguars foundation, NFL flag stuff, mm -hmm. but you work very, uh, you're very much into NFL flag. Yep. Tell me about what your kind of your role as an NFL flag, how kind of how you got the gig with NFL flag, what it's like to work with the children as a lot yep. where, what it's like to work with children and yep. a lot of kids shooting. And I know it's fun. Kids are vulgar though. Nowadays yeah. too. When yeah, I, when yeah, I, when yeah. I work with them, I have to be like, okay, tone it down to a PG level. <laughs> right. Let's try that again. Right. Right, um, right. right. But you know, you, you seem really, really heavily involved and yeah. you were at the Pro bowl shooting NFL flag for yeah. days. I seen, I'm seeing all your videos, all your edits are so fire. Everything sure. you're putting, everything in the NFL flag. I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is his, maybe some combination of other people's shots. Yeah. Cause you have a team obviously, yeah. Yeah. but tell me about your role with NFL flag. Yeah, man. It's, it's been great working with NFL flag over like the last three years. Um, and seeing the growth of the organization and the growth of the game. Just to preface uh, what I'm about to say a little bit, um, the game of flag football is growing around around the it's world. It's getting so big. Around, and I, I had no clue mm -hmm. just how, how big it was until I, I did my first um, – my first gig with RCX Sports, which who 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 owns and operates NFL Flag, right. so it was the NFL Flag Championships, I think, way back in two thousand one, uh, and just to see all the kids from all around the country to see the level at which the girls were playing the game, like it's, that that's they're, the big, they're getting yeah. crazy. It, it's it's amazing. They're like, getting crazy. Back 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 in when I was in high school, flag football was sort of like oh like you know it, yeah, it, it was like it kind of like kids, too, right? It was kind of like almost like maybe 10 to like 15 years old right like kind of like flag football for like kids and right you know again you don't see many like girls playing right but nowadays right. yeah it wasn't super competitive but I, I went to that event and saw the level of competition you saw from 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 the girl side was really what sort of drew you in you knew the the boys could play at a high level especially a lot of these 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 guys are gonna go on to play you know contact and going to play division right. one football um, but now sort of learning more about just the ecosystem of flag there's there's um, NAIA that has a whole entire league of college girls flag football. Right. Girls are playing playing flag football on scholarship. It's in the Olympics now. It's in the Olympics. They're, it's growing. They're, they're saying in the next seven to ten years it's going to be a sanctioned sport in each and every uh, state. I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't be. Yeah, right. absolutely. So and and so that now there, there, there's a pathway to these mm -hmm. these girls that are playing the game at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, as as preteens and teens, for mm -hmm. them to go on and play in the Olympics, right. for them to go on and play Division One and get right. a scholarship. So just seeing all that was 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 incredible, and it's been yeah. incredible to see the, the the growth of the game culminating in, like you said, the um, the twenty twenty eight Olympics in, in mm -hmm. L A. But um, my my role for them is just uh, helping with with marketing initiatives and, and and sort of paid marketing and social media and and uh, super sick promo edit video promos stuff, and things, yeah, tons think, of video stuff. Like, you and know, you're you're editing a lot of these videos yourself. Yeah. Even yeah. though, you, excuse me. Even though you have a team of shooters, you're yeah. collabing other shots and that stuff. Mm -hmm. 
everyone's dropping footage. Yep. But you are you you're one of the main editors of a lot of these videos that I see like posted on the socials on Instagram. Yep. You're editing like a lot of these videos, yep. and they're insanely good, insanely good. And, and going back to you know kids gr coming up in flag football right now. I think I've heard people talk about it too, like at, the, at our NFL, like our bosses and stuff mm. um, at the LCC. I think it's really important for kids to get passionate about football. Yeah. And so football can stay relevant, yeah. so relevant and popular and mm. all that stuff. But a lot of parents are afraid to let their kids play tackle football. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. a lot of parents are afraid to let, so this is a way for kids to become huge fans, yep. still look up to people like Patrick Mahomes mm -hmm. and, you know, still like, be involved in football and maybe they're not allowed to play tackle and pads and that hard hitting, you know, real sport, maybe for certain reasons in their life. I wasn't allowed to play sports cause I grew up a musician. So my parents weren't mm -hmm. about me like breaking bones or yeah. getting hurt. Cause you know, I was playing music as a kid mm -hmm. growing up and that was what was important. Right. Yeah. So every kid, but I loved flag football. In yeah. fact, when I went to a couple like youth group camps growing up in church, I would play flag football. Nice. I always loved playing flag. I still go out and, and throw with my wife. Like I nice. love throwing a football around, even though I'm not an athletic dude. I absolutely love, I can throw a football a little bit and mm -hmm. I love, uh, but you know, again, though, kids who can't play tackle, yeah. it's good. Flag football can play that role mm -hmm. in their life to give them some fun of actually playing it and becoming fans of football. And the NFL yeah. is such a uh, dominant thing in, in our world our country well growing now our world and mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. maybe not the whole world but yeah you know what i mean we're growing yeah it's, it's yeah. big it expands the entry point so much for for the game of football just yeah. for for younger girls who, who who before something like nfl flag they just didn't have opportunity to play the yeah game there was of no outlet to like play football right so yeah. I, I i i saw it and, and i continue to go to the competitions and the regionals and the national competitions at the pro bowl and i said like um I want to do something for the kids in my community that don't have access to this to this game. Like I want to be a positive role model for uh, you know young, specifically young black boys and young black girls to have a positive male role model to look up to. So exactly. I started a, a flag football league in, in my community, and just to see, like you said, like. Um, Kids that might they, they might they have might have a medical issue where they can't play contact football, mm -hmm. but they still want to enjoy the they game. Love it. Right. They they, they still love the game, they still want to enjoy it, still want to learn the game. Mm -hmm. So for those kids, for the younger girls that we have in our league, watching them build their confidence, watching them their skills grow, you know, over the last I, I, this is our we're going in our third season now. So right. um, you know, I, I being involved with the organization, Infant Flag organization and, and seeing what I saw, it inspired me so much. I said I I want to start a league of my own. So Yeah. Yeah. And so you, you, you've started a league. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, I run a league, uh, I run a youth league. We're starting our season on April six. Oh wow, man. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. That's sick. Yeah. And then yeah. what is this league targeted completely for? Like, are, is there an age gap that it's targeted at? Goes from from six years boys old and all girls. the way up to seventeen boys okay. and girls. Yeah. Sick. And yeah. this is flag football. Yep. In Tampa. Uh, Orlando. In Orlando. Yeah. Oh great. Yeah. 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 Because. Uh, a lot of the NFL flag like teams are kind of connected to the NFL teams right and there is no team in Orlando yep. so Orlando needs Orlando needs that yeah and you definitely. saw that and you yeah. could see what Orlando needs yeah and now you're creating it yeah it, well, in, in so my sick. specific in my specific area there wasn't any any there weren't any teams a little further south mm -hmm. um, like southeast Kissimmee, and southwest maybe. yeah so there, there are sure. more leagues on, on that side but I'm a little bit further north so there wasn't there i just looked on the map because there's no leagues and i want kids to have access yeah. and, and opportunity and i want to be uh be able to build that culture we talked about like the culture of a, of a nfl franchise so mm -hmm. i want to be able to build that culture of my league the way that i wanted it to be and mm -hmm. and sort of use the game to teach kids important lessons about life and we need like, it right right we need it use we the need game it more, more than ever probably oh now yeah definitely. Right, like right now in definitely. our in our, our our country we yeah we need that yeah, absolutely. That's amazing, man. Yeah, man. That's a good story. Yeah. That's a good story, and yeah. I wish you all the all the luck on that. Appreciate and you. I'll definitely come visit you sometime down there oh, when man. it gets going, and come I shoot with you, you and just have some fun. And definitely. Um, you extended an invitation to me to come shoot with you this yeah. Pro Bowl at NFL flag. Yeah. And like, I was like, yeah, I'm absolutely good. And then I got a call from the NFL, like, hey, we need you to work for us for the week. And I was like, nice. no. Yeah. I hope Michael doesn't hate me. Like, no, no, he no. knows I love, I love him. But I was like, yeah. well, you know, when our boss, mm -hmm calls you and says yeah. hey we've uh you know we'd like to offer you to go do this and you're like dang yeah. i gotta be a yes man like yeah. and of course yeah. i wanted to do it you know yeah. you're wearing the hat like yeah. of course i wanted to do it yeah. and i, I would have been thankful to be there either way even if i would have been happy to be down there shooting with you it's still cool that i still got to come out because the uh lcc 
program assigned me mm -hmm. to shooting some flag stuff. Yep. So I got to still go out there and shoot yep. the kids for a whole day. Got a little sunburn. Totally worth it though. <laughs> um, made a bunch of content. I need to make a little video just from my stuff. Yeah. I think I've made one. I made that black and white yep. one. That was I've done a little bit. I really, I got a lot of, I got a lot of random footage. I need to make more, but. So what, but, what did you think? Just being able to be out there and look at the, right. just the level of competition. And, Absolutely and how huge. It how, how it compares from so a, from a skill set skill set tra uh, standpoint mm -hmm. like transferring those skills from flag to the to the game of, of contact football what do you think kids are so much you think this is going to blow your mind you think like that the nfl guys move so fast jump so high and it's harder to track them playing the game mm -hmm. it's in my opinion i think it's almost harder and more challenging mm -hmm. tracking these little kids yeah they're running around so fast. I know grown men run. Tyree Kill runs faster than anyone, right? Yeah. But yeah. nah, dude. Yeah. I don't know if Tyree Kill. It's really. It's. It takes some real. Um. It takes some real focus to yeah. be able to catch these kids jumping in there, catching yeah. the ball, playing. Um. Especially when everyone's kind of. They're just little in the frame of yeah. the shot, yeah. and there's so many there's so many kids little running around you, mm -hmm. and of course the fields are so much smaller on a big mm -hmm. football field. You have this huge amount of space to yep. be able to shoot and see to see the ball fly through the air, mm -hmm. but in a little or flag field. Yeah. But but going off what you said or what you asked about the just the feeling out there though, the vibe out during the big NFL flag it felt like a festival. I go yeah. to a lot of big concert festivals, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh it felt like a massive festival. I couldn't believe the amount. I've been to some flag events, mm -hmm. but I could not believe the amount of kids that were at that one. There was how yeah. many fields were there all together? There were so many. Ton of fields. There had to have been like 10 fields being fields. played on at like one time cuz each yeah. massive field that there was at this big uh it was at UCF. Yeah. It was at the UCF College, mm -hmm. Central Florida. And there were so many massive fields and then you have little fields, you know, made out of the big fields. So yeah. you yeah. could have one big football field and there'd be four games going on. Yeah. And yeah. each like four actual games going on at one time. Mm -hmm. So you could like turn this way and be shooting this game and then just kind of turn your body this way and be shooting this game a little bit. Yeah. And you can literally just kind of shoot like four games going on at one time yeah. if you're sitting in the right spot. But it was really it was really cool to see. I love all the team logos and mm -hmm. um Cool seeing uh, people I've worked with the Jaguars down there set up. Yeah, you know, a um, lot of lot of friends in the Jaguars Foundation. Of course, they were with the kids. The flag had their own thing set up. But you were slaying it though. As soon as I Appreciate saw you, you, like as soon as I literally saw you, you were locked in, right. just getting <laughs> yeah. shots. And I was right. like, I was like, you know, instead of shooting this. I'm just gonna shoot him for like a second. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, and that's one I thing just I love taking you, pictures man. of you. I really appreciate you. you. You always take the time to to shoot people and give them some. Like, we're we're always shooting. We never get yeah. a chance to take pictures of ourselves. Yep. You take that time to, to take pictures of us so we can. You know, I have feel some like heat that's part of my persona. It. Even yeah, at yeah, our yeah. games, like I've photographed. Even if I don't even barely know you, I've like I've at least photographed every single photographer on the Jag field, nice. and I'll just find them on Instagram and just DM a little photo that's, of themselves yeah. because. I'm from both worlds. Like before I picked up a camera, I was on the other world. I was in music, I was in bands. I mm -hmm. used to pose in front of a camera for like yeah. pictures all the time. Yeah. It's a lot skinnier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, but like I've been on the other side and like now that I'm on this side, I, uh, these are all rock stars doing their thing. Like yeah. all photographers oh, are man. all, we're all like our own form of yeah. personalities and yeah. we're all proud of what we do. And it's, yeah. it connects um, people in the world better to you to be able to see, see you. you. Yes, they see yes. your work all the time, mm -hmm. but it's really important for them to see you as well. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. just think that that's one of the most important things as being a content creator is you need to somehow, some way, figure out a way to not, uh, or just have the courage. I think yeah. it's really important too because a lot of people like, I know it sounds silly, but like, you know, I have some uh, plans coming up uh, where I'm going to be doing having a lot of dental work done. Like yeah. there's certain, everyone's got their own, like, yeah. what do you call it? Like things about themselves yeah. that, are, that they're ashamed of or like things that they want to work on or mm -hmm. maybe not proud of what they look like on camera, you know? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, but everyone deserves a picture or a video clip of themselves in the moment shooting. I think it's really important to showcase who you are behind the camera. It's always just kind of been part of my, I don't know, my thing. All facts, man. Yeah. That, that, that all just shows others. your heart, man. You're just a genuine hearted person that that's really, thinking beyond just like what you can do for yourself. Like what can I do yeah. for this person? It's going to make their, their day a little bit better, right. help them grow their brand. So I appreciate it that. It speaks to who you are as a person. For sure. You know, I go off about myself all the time on yeah. social media. So yeah. <laughs> I, I have to, I want to even it out yeah, like, yeah, yeah, in my yeah. soul, in my heart. I love yeah. taking 
I love giving I love giving love to all kinds of other people. Yeah. Uh, because I do feel like I do flex myself like a lot. Not like I need I'm to get better at that. Anything, I need to get better. At I that, post man, myself honestly. quite a bit on social media, so like yeah. it makes me proud to also post a lot of you know people, whether it's players, other photographers, yeah. friends, maybe people it, like. I'll post photos of the social team of the Jags. Yeah. They're not even like photographers or anything. They're just they're just people who have a job with this organization. But right. every human deserves to have a nice picture of themselves. Right. And people who never even expect, like I've DM'd like uh, these players, uh, the people who kind of escort them around, like yeah. and they become friends. Like this one guy at our uh, industry, or one guy at the Jaguars, his name's Dylan. It's like he's probably th- this guy that's like not ever expecting anyone to take a picture of them, right, you know, right, like right, right. ever, you know, yeah. saying when you email them a photo, like, Hey, I pop this nice portrait. You're like, Oh man, thank you. Or yeah. like, you know, him or, yeah. or a lot of other people, like they're really appreciative that you would take the time to take a picture of them because yeah. in our minds, it's like, Oh no, I'm, I'm nobody, you know, focus right. on him, focus on him. Right. I've even heard that. Like you shoot him. Like, yeah, yeah I got tons of him. I'm taking yeah. one of you. Cause yeah. you're, you're great. You're really nice. You're a great person. You'd be right. kind to me. And I'm a, right. I'm a pop a shot of you. Hell yeah. And even if you never post it, you have a nice picture of you for your, Maybe for your wife or something. Hell I don't yeah. know. Hell but yeah. yeah, I love I love creatives and being on both sides in my life. Remember, yeah. I didn't pick up a camera till I was 26. Yeah. Being on just both sides of um, of it through my life, that's, that's why you're here. Yeah. Because I, I love talking to other creators. And it doesn't matter if you are any kind of, you can be any kind of creator. I want to have people one day on the creative podcast that are, uh, make music. Yeah. If you're any kind of creative in any way whatsoever, it doesn't yeah. have to be just somebody that shoots with a camera. Yeah. That's one thing I do, but I do a lot of things, yeah. you know, and you do a lot of things. Like you went to college for all these things. Mm-hmm. And even now you do so many things, even though you still, you're shooting full time, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, speaking of, you know, you shooting in gear, I want to, I want to kind of transition a little bit into gear. Okay. Man, earlier you mentioned one of the first cameras when you, when you seriously, you start taking it seriously was the Sony. What are you shooting on now? Okay. What's the big awesome rig that I saw you shooting on at the Pro Bowl? Yeah. Is that your same rig for your NFL? Yep. Is that that's your main rig? Tell me what it is, why you like it, what's next for you when it comes yeah. to gear. Let's talk about gear just for a couple minutes. Yeah, for sure, man. I, so I shoot uh, my dedicated still still camera is the A92. Okay. Uh, I thought it was a good combination. Great between, camera. Yeah, yeah. Two twenty-four megapixels. Yep. Shoots twenty frames a second. I'm about to buy the three. Oh, the three is amazing. The only, three's, these, only the three's otherworldly, man. It's oh, otherworldly. Yeah. So I, I, I thought about getting the A1, mm-hmm. but I said let me, uh, let me just have a dedicated still and then a dedicated video. Okay. So I That's have. Um, yes, yeah, so I have my my A92, and then I also have the uh, FX6. Mm-hmm. So FX6 built out with the you know the Atmos. And that was kind of the the, the box bigger Sony that you were rocking. Okay, so that's the FX6. FX6, I'm still learning a lot of the Sonys. Like Uh, I shot on an A6300 when I was uh, touring in music in 2018 and 19. So I had a 6300. I had an A7 III. And then I switched fully to Canon. And I've been Canon all the way for for a few years now. All Canons. Up until recently, I bought an A7S III just because I miss Sony so much. I needed to get one back, right? So I don't know much about the Sony. I don't know a lot about the the different lines of them. There's mm-hmm. so many. It's hard to keep up with. Yeah. So um, why that one? What is it doing for you? Why why'd you really choose that one? So the number one reason for me, um, just taking video seriously as, as a cinematographer right. and getting into doing commercial work and, mm-hmm. and stuff for marketing, the, the internal indie was was super huge to be able to I shoot. I know you running, mentioned that. You did gun. mention yeah. that to me. So it has built in internal ND. Yep. Internal super is important. Huge. Yeah. Yep. Internal ND is huge. And you have um, all your frame rates. You have yep. a good slow you have a good obviously high frame rate for slow 4K motion. 120. 4K 120. 4K 120 you can go up to 240 and uh, 1080. 1080. Which is super yep. awesome. Especially yep. Yep. for yep. all the social media work that we do. Yep. Uh phone stuff gravitates towards 1080. I mean I don't yep. think anyone's exporting anything in 4K right. to post it on like Instagram or TikTok because right. Uh, it actually bump, it compresses it yeah. down because it has to be 1080. So yeah. we're all exporting in 1080 anyway. Right. So, right. but yeah, 240 is fire. Yeah. 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 So, um, why I got that, that specific camera, man, yeah. it, it just, um, the price I, point, I, 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 the price point. I love how smooth and crisp that Kodak, uh, delivers in, in, mm-hmm. in, in Premiere Pro. So Pretty big files in that thing. Uh, they can be big if you're shooting uh, shooting all in 4K, which I I, sure. I, t- I tend to do unnecessarily. For <laughs> just sure, I because I, I my, in some my, situations we're not even supposed to, we right. still do. My my creative eye can see that tiny difference 
and if yeah. if, if you no, 4K same. compressed you sure rather can. than 1080 compressed, yeah. but but it probably people probably don't even notice it. No, no, yeah. so. but I notice. Yeah, we yeah, notice. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, man, I, I love that camera. It's it's a uh, you, you can strip it, it down. Yeah, yeah, so it's light, so you can strip it all the way down mm-hmm. and sort of fly it on a gimbal, mm-hmm. um, or it, it's 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 robust enough to where you can you can kit it all the way out. Yeah, and it can be used. Which for is what a I saw production. you using it really built out. I was like, dang, that's that's a fire looking rig. Yeah, you had just obviously a monitor on top. It almost gave the vibes of like a red yeah but yeah, the yeah. price point's a little different yeah um yeah. but you're still getting that it's kind of like that box camera that has it's almost intimidating looking at it yeah, too because yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it looks completely different than like a sony a7 III, like yeah. what a lot of shooters in the, the game mm-hmm. nowadays the smaller just mirrorless cameras mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. you look at like a box camera like what you have yeah just like the the red komodos and all these bigger cinema cameras mm-hmm. it's a box yeah and you kind of have to build it out a little bit you gotta yeah. add maybe like batteries yeah a uh, big battery pack on the back yep um monitor on top you just a uh, hard drive maybe maybe yep. even tracking straight to a hard drive yep. instead of a memory card like uh just you can build them out and yeah. they look at first they're like ooh. That looks yeah. intimidating. It looks, looks like a, yeah. this is a nice rig. Yeah, it looks, it looks like sick. A I love the black and white photo that you posted on your of oh yeah, running, like running, running with it. it looks yeah. so fire. Sick, sick. Shout out, shout out for that, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, the fact you can you can you can run it really light. Sometimes I run it with just a box and a small right. pancake lens, so I can run and gun. It's really really light. Sure. Um, or I can, like you said, I can I can kit it all the way out. So um, it's 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 a really good camera. I yeah. really, really enjoy shooting with it. I think all the footage from uh, from it that you've yeah. posted yeah. has made me um, debate one. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I really want the Sony A9 III because I want that global shutter to yeah. really. We shoot a lot of uh, I, sh- I shoot a lot of stuff uh, that has boards in the background quite yeah. often. Not just like football stadium. Mm-hmm. You want to shoot some slow mo stuff. You're shooting a 120 mm-hmm. uh, because of you know the shutters and these digital boards nowadays. The heavy flickering. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, me, myself, and Cam, who works at the Jaguars. Shout, shout out, out Cam, man. Shout, shout out, out Cam, Cam the he's, shooter. He's a great guy. He's uh, one of my great friends, you know, in the in the organization. He's helped me out so much. We help each other out all the time. And he's probably the person that works at the Jaguars that I text and talk to the most. He's like, yeah. uh, we're just talking about, I think I'm going to be shooting his wedding. Yeah. Uh, good friend of mine. But anyway, we're both talking about all the flickering all the time for yeah. the, the monitors, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so I want the Sony A9. I can just rapid trail straight off. Yeah. But I want the A9 III. Yeah. But I also look at your camera and I yeah. think, I want a camera that has built-in NDs, yep. a camera that I can kind of build out for a, a different type of rig mm-hmm. more than just like what the mirrorless is offer. Yep. So I got a decision to make this year because I know the Sony FX is kind of around that, isn't around that 6,000, yep. kind I'm of like around that. Point. Yeah. Yep. So... If you're somebody that does, I'd say if you're 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 somebody that does both, um, the way that you do, Mm -hmm. so at at such a high level, every camera I buy is a hybrid camera. Yeah, Yeah. yeah, so you probably would would want to go hybrid. That's also the reason why I want a cinema camera. Mm. The wife's always talking to me too. She's like, we have all these great cameras, but what we don't have is a cinema camera. We produce a lot of like Amazon product videos and a lot Mm. of commercial work as well. Yeah, but they all still they all look great. Yeah, 4K like a lot of them they all look beautiful, right? Canon produces a beautiful look. Yeah, so does the Sony's, uh, the the mirrorless ones. Yeah, but you can just tell little cinematic that 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 cinema camera. You just tell. It gives you a little it bit more. Tell. It, looks like, it yeah, just yeah. looks like a commercial on TV. Yep. A little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll buy a purchase every year. We need write-offs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just exactly. Print. Eventually, I'll just have a hundred cameras. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same rig that you had for the Pro Bowl. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, you got to shoot uh, Peyton Manning's kids, right, at the yep. Pro Bowl. Yep. 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 <laughs> when you when you got when you got that uh, information, you're like. Yep. I'm going to go shoot the Manning kids. Yeah. At first, I obviously, you know, you want to shoot gameplay. You want to, and you've shot that stuff before. And I'm sure you've, you've shot uh, many huge games in your career, Mm -hmm. but I do think sometimes getting these unique little side gig jobs are like, they can be quite special sometimes. Like, um, shooting Peyton Manning's kid. Was it Peyton Manning's kid? Yeah. Both their kids. Eli. Yeah. Eli's, Eli's daughter and Peyton's daughter. Okay. So it was Peyton and Eli's daughters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you, that's a cool memory. Like, you're going to shoot a thousand games in your life, yeah. right? Yeah, but yeah, when yeah. they grow up, yeah. and you're like, these are the Manning children, you'd be yeah. like, yeah, I got to shoot them when they were children. Yeah, And exactly. Or doing this cool little event at the Pro exactly, Bowl. Yeah. And just cool memories. Yeah. Something that's a little different than, you know, just another football game. Yeah. Sometimes there's a special... Uh, special opportunities that I think sometimes in the moment you're like ah, but later on down the line you really find some appreciation for for some stuff like Definitely. that. You know, so like, the, the producer and me just approaches every situation 
um, understanding how I can become a better producer and storyteller. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a unique um, avenue to tell the story of the Pro Bowl to people that might not resonate with the on-field gameplay. They right. might not resonate with the players. That was something. For so it's for, it's for a whole different audience. Right. So it just it puts me. Whenever I do something like that, that's sort of outside my wheelhouse. It just, it, to me, it just expands my understanding right. of how to strategically tell a story. It might not always be from the most obvious point of view. There sure. might be some other point of view yeah. that's gonna, that's going, that's going to set you apart. And I think the people that tell tell stories the best, whether it's uh, print, whether it's you know stills, whether it's graphics, whether it's video, people that are able to find that mm -hmm. sort of um, back alleyway. Yeah entrance to no, tell I know a story, exactly you know what, what I mean? you're saying I mean so it, it was cool to be a just cool to be a part of that and just yeah. to see how it was it was all packaged and how we told that story and how mm -hmm. we presented it to people and how it's going to resonate it's just another way to help to build the NFL to brand build the story. and and, yeah. and and show it and to reach people out to that, kids right. right because the next generation like we were talking about earlier yeah. and whether it's uh you know Peyton Manning and Eli Manning's kids to a lot of the other players kids like yeah. they're all these all these kids are going to grow up right. and football and the NFL is still going to be a part of their lives because exactly. of who they are their last names yeah and you and uh kind of like uh not that not not shooting a video or anything but a similar thing is like uh at the Bucks game that I came down to mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago um I took a really nice portrait of Tom Brady's kid mm -hmm. and I'm like man I'm just glad that I got this picture of Tom Brady's kid because yeah. Tom Brady's kid's going to grow up one day. Who yeah. knows what he's going to do in his life. Yeah. But I have this really nice portrait of him when he was like 13 years old or however old he is right now. Sweet. You know, there at the game with jer dad's jersey on, supporting yeah. dad. Just a nice portrait. I got a picture of his dad too, Tom yeah. Brady Sr. Yeah. Proud of that one. Oh, nice. I'm going to have to post that one day. I literally nice. have a portrait of Tom Brady's. I don't want to seem weird about it. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're like little treasures because yeah. I love Tom Brady and, you yeah. know, I love just the family's that are like part of the NFL history yeah. and all that stuff. That's just like, the lore of right. it. The part of the history or part of the story. Mm -hmm. Like when I was a kid, I would stay up all night watching ESPN Same. classic. The and re, the, 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 just the playing stories. replays of yeah. all the games. Right. Yeah, right. It right. was so high back in the day too. Right. Right. They, they, I didn't think, <laughs> No other brand, I feel like, in the world does a, no. does a, does a better job of storytelling. Staying up all night watching Chris Berman on Monday Night Countdown. Yes. After Monday Night Football, ESPN. Like, yes. fall asleep watching the same highlight plays. Over and over, over again. Over Sports Center again. on loop. Yeah, Sports dude. Center on loop. Oh, yeah, man. man. And just back in the day, it's like the three fastest three minutes. Like, yep. just like playing on loop. Like, uh, I'll talk to Carly sometimes during game days on how some of these voices, like Al Michaels. Yeah. Uh, some of these voices, like they're like soothing to my ears. Yeah. Just hearing some of these voices, like I don't even care what we're doing. As long as like, uh, the, there's a game on, like I love having a game on while we're working. Even if I'm not, I love all the games, obviously a huge fan of NFL as, as an entire diehard Jag fan, but I love all the teams. I'll watch right. any game on at any point. I know players on every team. I love it. Right. But sometimes when we're working, we have a game on in the background. Yeah. Even she's at the point now where she's like, yeah, Al Michaels' voice is just soothing. Like, what yeah. do you mean? I don't yeah, even yeah. know what's going on, <laughs> yeah. but them talking in the background and yeah. the gameplay and the sound of the game on for three hours, yeah. it actually helps us. Like, during season, I love Monday nights. I love Thursday night football, yeah. TNF. I love sometimes random Saturday or just start randomly a Friday game yeah. start happening. But, like, these extra nights during the week other than just Sundays where we're working and we work from here from home and just having that on during – uh, for three whole hours or even yeah. an hour pregame and just some after YouTube videos and mm -hmm. just that whole world on being on for for more days is is it's helped it's helped us a lot. We love it. We just Definitely. we just love football in this house. Definitely not no I came from a football house. Same. I plan to have my house be a football oh, yeah. house. So yeah. Uh, since we're talking about football, we're yeah. on the subject. Yeah. Uh, this is just a flat out one of the questions that I have written down. Yeah. Tell me a couple, maybe even one of your favorite shots. My favorite taken. shot, yeah. probably uh, Tom Brady to Mike Evans. Um, I forget who they were playing. Mm -hmm. but it's, it it's a touchdown, touchdown pass uh, from Tom Brady to Mike Evans. It sort of blew up. And on you just Instagram. caught it. And you just caught it perfect. Yeah, yeah, I caught it perfectly, and then it was a really, really, really cool play. It's good atmosphere, good light. So that's probably the the, the clip that I I think back to when you asked that question. Yeah, and you yeah. could watch that clip like a hundred times. You just love oh, that for clip. sure. Yeah, for sure. and it did good on Instagram for you. Yeah, did yeah, pretty pretty well. Good. Yeah. It's hard to good. It's hard to get anything to pop on Instagram nowadays. Yeah, dude, social media is uh, a butthole in itself, dude. Like I've been it's trying to transition so to TikTok. Yeah, and everyone's on this whole like TikTok ban. It might be banned soon. Yeah. They they're under false uh, they're under false pretenses. It's not banned. America just wants to, to buy. Right? Yeah, they yeah. have to sell it. Mm -hmm. So uh, to censor it probably more. We yeah. won't get into all 
that stuff. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, I've been trying to try. I've been trying to get on TikTok more and post yeah. more TikTok videos. Yeah, it's hard, man. I'm 35. It's hard. I feel like I'm just like an old guy trying to keep with the times of the the younger generation of everyone on TikTok. I'm like, dude, I've spent 12 years uh, pushing as hard as I could on Instagram. Yeah, and especially the past, let's say, seven years. Yeah posting and i've been a very you probably noticed i'm a very consistent poster i cannot believe I when you even, told me that you po- you've been posting every other day every other day at for, minimum for how many years i mean the whole time the whole i mean since i picked up a camera that's incredible since man. i picked, like now, that is there was incredible. one moment in 2020 which is the only time i've ever done this i was really burnt out on just all the things going on in the world my emotions were being affected very heavily mm. uh, very strongly opinionated about a lot of things in our world yeah and uh i did for the first time ever i deleted the app off my phone for a total of three months from wow. december of 20 uh from december of 2020 to my almost my birthday 2021 march 13th um i fully deleted it off my phone wow. um, i still existed i just deleted it and i just wanted to be off social media i needed a break after all the years straight of posting but since i picked up a camera yeah. uh posting non-stop i always had this one mindset yeah and i guess it's benefited me a little bit i've always had this one mindset of as long as i keep posting at least a couple times a week i'm going to stay relevant in people's eyes yeah even though instagram hates me and there's so many people probably that follow me that don't even ever see my posts yeah. because of just how lame the Insta gods <laughs> yeah, are. Yeah. They just completely control what's yeah. how, like, I have this many followers, but I know for a fact that my posts literally only go out to this many of my followers. Yeah. Yeah. So what the hell is that all about? Yeah. You know, I, and I've worked really hard too for all these, even in the past couple of years, a couple of reels have popped off, got me a lot of followers. I still post and it goes out to probably one, two percent of my, my following. So Crazy. shout out to Instagram for totally effing my my statistics and numbers. Right. I don't even I don't think I'm like shadow ban or anything. I just think that TikTok or sorry, Instagram is so weird about the, the algorithms and the analytics and mm-hmm. like, you know, I, anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I always just thought as long as I keep posting, no one will forget that I exist. Yeah. And people will just keep seeing my name. Yeah. Aaron Berkshire posted yeah. this photo whether it was a rock star in a band for the years yeah. or whether it's a football photo over the past three years or even a picture of myself or just repping some clothes or a bag or whatever right just stay relevant yeah. and it's it's something that people go through a lot at our age mine's a little different people go through midlife crises all this stuff sure but for me i just growing up i wanted to be a rock star I'm a yeah. musician you've heard me talk about it everyone's yeah. heard me talk about it a million times but uh it's not as important that like Oh, I just, I just want to stay relevant. Like some of these Hollywood celebrities, I'm not famous. I never have been. I'm never made, never will be. I don't care about that, Mm -hmm. but I just want my last name to be known and appreciated. And I want people when they think of me or see me on social media, uh, just to think of me and go, he, he's going to be, and is one of the greats. That's always just what I wanted. When I was a drummer, I wanted to be one of the greatest drummers as a photographer and videographer. I just wanted to be one of the great. I don't know why yeah. I just come from a really poor, like trail kind of like really low life income from West side, Jacksonville, super ghetto where I'm from. Like, and I just, I don't know. I just always had like this extra dream of, I wanted to be something special. Right. I don't know why just nobody right. in my family was ever, I guess, great. And I just felt like it was my calling. And it's like be, being special or being a star or being like, we can all be that in our role. Like, mm-hmm. We can all, we can all, right. We can all, we can all, amen to that. One thing I love the most is going somewhere and interacting with somebody that doesn't have to be great at what they do, but Mm -hmm. they're just phenomenal. Like that, I get so much appreciation from that when somebody's like the best barista and just like makes my morning better. It's like, yo, you, you're, 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 what am I you're giving your all. You're giving your all you at what you do. Right. You care. And it yeah. makes people look like rock stars no matter what right. industry they're in. Right. And I right, totally right, right. am there with you yep. because for a long time before I obviously stepped through the door of being a full time content creator, entrepreneur, us owning our business, Carly and I, my wife, we met, my wife, we met in a restaurant and I was a cook. And I cooked, I washed dishes all the way from 15 years old all the way to 26. I worked in a restaurant as a cook, a line cook, cooking steaks, fryers, salads. I did it for a decade. 
and I was one of the best there ever was. I can imagine. Like I, I can, was, I can imagine. I was one of the best grill cooks in yeah. the whole. I worked for a restaurant called Longhorn Steakhouse. We all know what it is. Yeah. Everyone knows about Longhorn. They're all around the country. Carly was a server when she got a job. I cooked for Longhorn. I used to win employee of the quarters. I won like three of them. <laughs> um, I won a grill competition cooking steaks when I was yeah. like 21. Yeah. Um, I just obviously have that natural energy. People probably think like I'm on drugs, but no. God just gave me this really <laughs> unfathomable amount of, I have the energy of like 10 people. I say right. all the time. Right. But when I was in a kitchen, I felt like I, I was a rock star grill cook, right. you know? And like, this just goes back to what you're saying though, yeah. uh, whether you're a bartender or a cook or, Be a star in your or just role. anything, yeah. a lawyer yeah. or a real estate agent yeah. or a social media boss at a football yeah. team or even a football player. It yeah. doesn't matter what you're doing in life. If you give it your all, you can get somewhere, you can be acknowledged, you can be appreciated. And uh, I don't know, I just, I think it's, sometimes I say stuff and my and my girl will be like, hey, it kind of comes off a little kind of cringy. And I'm like, I know I repeat myself at all because you don't want to just sit there and say on every podcast, yeah. I want to be an inspiration. I want yeah. people to be inspired by me. Yeah. But even though sometimes it gets kind of uh, said a lot, you know, a lot of these people say it and it's like, she's like, what do you want to be now? Mo one of these motivational speaker guys. <laughs> and it's, it's not about that. Yeah. It's about, I don't even have to, even though I talk a lot. Yeah. If my work can speak volumes that I give it my all people right. see my photos and my videos and just say, this dude is, is giving so much to this right. that I don't have to speak. It can just show through my work. Right. And anyone, and then you can make the whole goal is to make a living. I mean, right. and, and just maybe have your name, a little bit of legacy attached to it after we live, leave this place, you know? Oh yeah. Man. And, and, and I, th I talk to the kids a lot about, uh, leaving a legacy and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, these, these football players have, have a legacy in our minds because of what they did on the field or, mm -hmm. or how they played the game. But we, we can leave that same legacy in, in, in our world. Mm -hmm. We all, we all live, we all have our little world our little bubble right you know what i mean if i if i can in my community if i can be known when i when i pass away as somebody that, that helped thousands of kids yep you know get 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 to the next level get to college um find a better path for themselves or they just sort of looked at me as a positive male role model i, I will have done my job if i if i um if the people that the shooters in florida if they look at me and say like oh, he always came to work he always was professional. He always gave everything he had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's my, like you said, that's your name. That's my name. That's exactly. what people, how people are going to remember When your name you comes important. up or is seen on social media yeah, or just anything, the first thought, what is that first thought that yeah. people are going to think of you right. when they see your name, hear your name, see anything. And a lot of people um, are so, um, I don't want to say like, I don't want to say not focus on that stuff, but a lot of people have a lot of um, bills to pay. Yeah. And they not they don't have the time and the energy because it's so hard to make a living in this country yeah. and in this world. Yeah. So I feel like we need people like like that. We need yeah. people like you, people that, you know, like me, not, you know, and, and, and it kind of comes off like I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything. But again, I just want to inspire yeah. whether you think I do or I don't or you care or you don't care. It doesn't matter. Right. I'm in my world. You're in Michael's world, yeah, and that's what we want to do. Right. So if people don't like what we who do, who cares? Yeah, who cares? who cares? It doesn't matter. Man. Yeah. I'm 35. Yeah. And I make I've been making the joke the past week uh, yeah. since my birthday. I'm like, dang, I'm gonna be 40 in five years. Yeah. All right. So in five years, when I turn 40, mm -hmm. then what is Jacksonville? What is my hometown? What is what are people gonna think of me when I'm 40? Yeah. Because at 40. Life changes so much. Like I'm sure we're gonna have a child by then. Mm -hmm. Life changes so much by 40 that I don't know. People could completely forget about you. Yeah. And again, that's on my heart that yeah. I just want to just leave a legacy of, yeah. uh, you know, hey, what, he was a great. What if I don't even do very much for photo or video? That right. five years can change so much. Right. We have no idea where we're gonna be in five years. Right. But people will still be able to look back and go. Dang, he he was fire though when he was doing it. Yeah, and the, no matter yeah. what you were doing, you know, yeah. people could say that about when I was a cook. Oh, he was a fire cook. Yeah, or he was a fire photographer. Like, or he was a great drummer. And in your case, all the different things that you've done through your, you know, through your time and all the careers changes. I'm gonna knock it over. <laughs> all the career changes that you've gone through. Yeah. Um, and I haven't seen all that side of you, your past, all all the stuff you created. But what I have seen is the Michael that I've gotten to see work, your work ethic, your content over the past couple of years, and your. You're so good at it. Appreciate you. I gotta blow you up in return. You yeah. know, you're so talented. Appreciate All your stuff is so good. You gotta post more of I it. Do. I know it doesn't matter. Yeah. And you already have a family. You already yeah. are paying your bills. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is that people 
people need to see your legacy. Yeah. And you're so talented that you need to leave your legacy. And for some reason, in in our like our day and age, the only way to really get our legacy out is just by posting on these stupid social media apps. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. here's my legacy. I'm right. just gonna post this photo every day or right. post a video clip or here's another reel. Right. I mean, it's just a forever it's a, history. Forever it's a history the, book. The, yeah. Yeah. It's literally just a history Facts. book. As long as they're not deleted forever. Yeah. Which whatever. If the internet goes out forever and the yeah. world's gone forever, or technology's gone, then whatever, fine. Right. But no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Be realistic. Yeah. These social media apps are the history books of our legacy. Facts. You know what I'm saying? We were the scribes of our day. Exactly. In the biblical times, they they walked around with a pen and pad yep. and scrolls. You know, yeah. Some yeah. Scrolls. So we uh, yeah. So we uh, we're, the, we're the scribes of our day. We're the storytellers of our day. So exactly. Our role our role is important. Even and, and whether it's in the sports mm -hmm. media side or, or or even capturing people's weddings sure. and moments that they're going to remember for the rest of their lives or mm -hmm. even just the like I said taking a picture of somebody that might be the picture that they use you for know. their linkedin right it's had it happen multiple times like right. oh, i never get pictures but i like that picture it's my linkedin profile pic right it's been said to me no exactly right and yeah so social media is our our legacy is our history book at least for yeah. now yeah and uh yep. yeah it's just always been important for me to um continue to get it out and it has worked out it has yeah. worked out like when i retired from music i had um 10 or twelve thousand followers on instagram okay. before i ever picked up a camera okay just from like my music band days you know mm -hmm. and then uh so doing and it's been seven years since i've been doing content mm -hmm. and i've grown from whatever i think it was like 10 or 12 all the way to where i am now which is like 30 something and it th so posting so consistently over the years yeah and and I've never paid for fake. I hate that shit. I actually talk, paid, paid for I talk crap about and, it all yeah. the time. Yeah, no, I talk crap about people that buy fake likes and fake mm. numbers and all that stuff because I'm actually proud right. that I've organically literally built my following. It, it takes time, and, dude. So long. Yeah, I used to. Oh my god, man. I remember. I remember back uh, six six years ago, back 2017, 18, I would like go to my fit, the bands I was shooting, mm -hmm. like that I would tour with, yeah. I would go to their posts. And I remember like just going and like liking and commenting at all their fans on their posts <laughs> just to get in, just to hopefully get, get the, more followers, yeah, just to get yeah, my yeah. followers up. Like yeah. I've grinded over the years. Yeah. Yeah. So hard. And I've changed industries. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I don't, let's, let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. <laughs> now, when, when we, we did, we did Pro Bowl. And like I started like following people that I didn't follow the LCC I was like everybody's social media thing like damn like, I know yeah <laughs> everybody's no, know. got like I met a bunch of people up. too yeah like damn no I met all here the I same. go with my two little twenty five hundred follow twenty five hundred little followers and but it doesn't matter though yeah and it doesn't matter and yeah. I'll tell you why do you pay your bills yeah that's what matters that's what matters right that's literally right. you have a wife you right. have kids they're fed yeah. the bills are paid the roof over your head yeah. doesn't matter how many freaking followers you have on instagram facts. it means facts. nothing that's right it means nothing that's does facts. it look cool yeah sure yeah to kids yeah i don't know any adults past our age that like <laughs> they care geeking about over that give a crap that i have 30k on instagram nobody cares i have like 2k on tiktok yeah. and i get like five likes on facebook yeah so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. It, you know it doesn't matter that's right. just the world that i put the most into yeah, yeah you know yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people are putting all their cards into tiktok Right. And they're making money. So they do. How, how like how much do you get? How much people reach out to you on Instagram to to proposition business? Um, how often does that happen? I wouldn't say I wouldn't say business propositions. Um, I mean, I do get a lot of hey, I'd love to shoot with you one day. Sure, uh, I think I get more questions. Um, I think I, I get more questions from shooters okay. who want to grow and get better gotcha. versus actual job opportunities. Gotcha. So I mean, a lot of inspiring which is why we're doing this podcast which exactly. is why i do youtube videos exactly. i actually got a question this morning before you got here on instagram what do you think i think uh the person messaged me and said what do you think the best um the best like setup how much money would i need to spend for like the best setup to start shooting sports yeah. and i literally replied with hey I, I have a youtube video on this i hope you go check it out sometime you know because i can't, can't type out those answers over Smart. and over again Smart. but i think i get more questions like that on instagram because yeah. people see my following and my work and uh i get more messages from probably creators than i do like uh actual customers you right know? so okay. but it's but in the content world there's so many different ways to make money oh man. i mean my wife my wife and i <laughs> my last podcast i did i was like dude i have to stop saying my wife so yeah much. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but carly and i we yeah. have five streams full on of income from nice. creating content nice. and that's what pays our bills nice. so if you're just in one Oh, you, you might know. want to think about expanding yeah, because you. in this day, yeah. sorry to sound like a broken record or every other motivational podcaster, yeah. 
but you're gonna have to if you're if you're a photographer videographer okay if you're a real estate agent you're a real estate agent yeah that's not what we're here for yeah we're in the creative locker podcast to talk about the creative world yeah and if you want to be a photographer videographer you're probably gonna have to be into more than one thing yeah if you want to make enough money to pay bills or to anything facts literally anything facts you you got to especially now when there's just such a need like we're we're sort of at the um not we're not at the front end of it but we're we're right in the heart i think we're in the middle in the middle of sort of this digital Mm -hmm. revolution where every everyone needs content and they haven't no matter what you do right it doesn't matter what you do every pain i just took photos for my handyman who did a custom wall yeah for his instagram yeah Everyone needs content. Right. And everyone hasn't quite figured out. They haven't had a got, gotten a grasp on it quite yet. Mm-hmm. So there's all these people that just has this, there's, there's a massive need. It's like, yeah. I need, need, need content. I need, who are the people that understand how to do this and know how already? Mm-hmm. Let me pay them to do this. And, I, and, and, and we can leverage our talents to get paid a, a, a good amount. Mm-hmm. Enough to, I mean, to there's enough money living. out there. Right. People might be afraid. Right. But scared money. Don't, don't make, make no money. money. Don't make no money. Like, <laughs> but this like, is there the, is this enough is the, money out there. This is an incredible time to be someone that creates content. Like there's oh, so we're in the, many. We're in the heart of it, like you yeah. said. Yeah, yeah. So we got, they say you got to maximize what we're doing right now, and then, mm-hmm. like you said, um, and look find forward your to the next play. Yeah, and find mm-hmm. your niches because yep. if you obviously if you love it, you're gonna be better at it. Yeah. You if you love what you do, yep. and you love the niches that you're in, like we yep. love shooting weddings. Yeah. We love that we get to spend most of our days here at home with our cats, yep. with each other, yep. shooting Amazon videos. Yep. I love football. Yeah. A little hustle on the side for the yep. year. People yep. think I bought a car from the NFL. <laughs> Hell not, nah, dude. People don't know. Nah. It's just another normal job that yeah. we clock in hourly for, and it's not yeah. crazy. Yeah. The only people, if you listen this far, the only people in the NFL that make money are the players and some of the coaches. Yeah. No one else is making like life changing career money. Facts. Okay. Like, Facts. I hope people really listen to that. Yeah. Because people say, like, all the time, like, ooh, NFL paying the big bucks is like, they're paying Trevor Lawrence the big bucks yeah, or they're yeah. paying like, pay, you know, they're paying the players, the big bucks, right. maybe a co- the head coach, maybe some coordinators, but like every other person on that field mm-hmm. is a no is a normal, I would say financially yeah. on a more normal, realistic level of yeah. all of us just trying to get by in life. Maybe, yeah. maybe some salaries a little bit more on that middle class yeah. area, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, no one's, none of us are making <laughs> No one's buying a car or paying. Not a single bill right. is paid in my life right. from the fact that I do clock in and work for the NFL. Right. right, right, right. And it's a cool flex. My yeah. uh, Carly, stop myself. Yeah. Carly, my girl, says it's a glorified hobby. Yeah. We do make a little money from it, and yeah. it's nice to be paid for our time. Yeah. But how many days of the year do you work for the NFL? Ask not yourself many. that question. Not many. Probably less than 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how many games we, we go to all of our home games. Yeah. Maybe we get sent to an extra game or two through the season. Yeah. Maybe we get hired for a lot, or maybe we get uh, assigned like a random or the opportunity to go shoot something during off season. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, if you take the amount of days right. throughout the whole year that I work for the NFL, right. you know, maybe 15 to 20. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. people, people have to understand that now it's different if you're, a photog- a team photographer. Right. right That's right, your right. full time job. Right. You make a salary, whether 50, 60, 70, 80 grand a year, mm-hmm. you know, or same thing, videographer. Yeah. Even the NFL films guys. Yeah. Great shooters, um, huge cameras. Amazing. Not their full time jobs at all. Right. Not their full they show they shoot all kinds of things. Yeah. A lot of the a lot of the uh most interesting stuff I do isn't even sports related. Right. So like a lot of the stuff that I, I enjoy the most and it's like, the, like um, a couple weeks ago, I did some stuff for an equestrian trainer, this guy that travels the country and he, he trains elite equestrian athletes. Yeah. And he sort of breaks down how they ride, how they move their bodies yeah. and how they can become better at controlling the horse. Like mm-hmm. that was super interesting to do That's I did so that for about four or five days. And, and uh, that was super, super interesting to shoot. Yeah. Um, I've got to shoot horses one time. Oh really? One time. <laughs> nice. What was it? Uh, it was for a commercial for a restaurant, oh, and the, they they had this uh, kind of collab partnership with a, a farm, okay. and uh, they were <clears throat> out there being cowboys, just riding horses. Mm-hmm. I got to drone, like follow them with the drone, like nice. shoot horses, and uh, that's the only time I've ever got to do that. But but going, you know, back what you're saying though, you can make you can make money so many different ways of content. A yeah. lot of the guys we work with in the NFL, a lot of people think that it's our only, like one of our only like biggest jobs. Cause it's such right. a glorified hobby. Right, like right, my right. wife was talking about yeah. uh, just being like this. People think it's this glorified hobby right. when it's, it is. And, yeah. it, and we don't, you know, pay our bills from working from the NFL or anything Facts. like that. You know, uh, 
and being content creators, you can literally do so many, like you were just, you just brought up the fact you sh shot horses. Yeah. There's so many things out there in the world that people need content for. Oh man. Yeah. So I've shot things I never even thought I would ever Same. be around. Same. You know, just yeah. because I had a camera in my hand, yep. things I never would imagine being around. Yeah. This is a yeah. perfect time to bring up uh, future goals yeah. for you. Um, yeah. You know, where you're at right now, super awesome. But where do you want to be for, from here in, in a few years? And like, what are your content and, in the notes you might have mentioned, I put at our age. Yeah. So I threw that in there. I thought I about thought, that all night. Yeah. I thought, I thought about that all night. I was like, I was like am, am I at the point in my life where, where this is, this is, you're like, I don't yeah. know. I was like, at I'm at age, this part. Okay. We're okay. At, at this age. Yeah. Do you still have dreams moving forward? Oh, like, yeah. Like, what are your sure. dreams like for five years from now? For sure. And is content creating still going to be a part of it? Yes. Yeah, so I think uh, I've always thought about my career. I, I've been blessed as just sort of had a, have a very solid mindset in terms of, future planning and the way I look at my career and the way I, I make plans and goals for myself from a very young age. And I, I credit my father for, for that. But um, even from when I was in college, I was like, okay, first phase of my career, I'll do this. Second phase, I'll do this. Third phase, I'll do this. So the first phase of my career was um, living living my dream. Living my dream, working at the working at ESPN, yeah. uh, meeting all these, meeting dream. and working with all these athletes and these partnerships and doing these shows and mm -hmm. um, shooting, shooting for the NFL and things mm -hmm. like that. That was sort of the first phase and now I'm transitioning into the second phase which is sort of like having that like I talked about having the entrepreneurial mindset how can I take this skill set and leverage it right and and make it make it work for me so now I'm, I'm moving into sort of building using my skill set to, to, to sort of build infrastructures where I can I can now employ people and, and yeah. hire people like I have the the uh, youth flag football league which I want to mm -hmm. use that as a feeder into a nonprofit that uh that funds experiences for for minor, minority kids that they wouldn't otherwise be able to to attend right like you were talking so, about earlier yeah. yeah so we want like to say for example i want to take a group of kids and, and fly them to the pro bowl fly them to the super bowl yeah. or fly them to a, uh, the national museum of, of african-american history in dc mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's all expense paid for because i think about all the experiences i had in my my, my adult life that how, how transformative would this have been had i had it when I was 12, 13, right. 14, yeah. right? And it's also just to be able to mentor the kids as well. So, so kids are a huge part of your your dreams and your future like Definitely. right now. Like yeah. you wanna just build, almost build build that, I said empire, but you wanna build that uh, culture. Yeah. And that's a huge thing for you, yeah, whether definitely. you're shooting or even just managing and just yeah. like helping organize and all logistics of, of what you're building with the kids in Orlando and all that. Definitely. So that's still that's a huge part of your yeah. dreams over so the next five that, years. Yeah, that's one aspect. And the next aspect is taking taking the skill set and taking this the, this this business that I've, I've grown by myself and these these um, uh, relationships. And then how can I leverage that and build a team around it right. and, and make it something that can continue to generate money where, where I'm not out there shooting. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Um, we're talking about marketing and mm -hmm. advertising and PR, and that's something I'm tr trying to build, mm -hmm. uh, build a funnel for and, and sort of build an infrastructure for definitely getting out, fully fully getting out there and having a team of people work yeah. underneath me and, and building that out. So that's something I'm working on as well. Sounds like building then, a little empire to me. Yeah, yeah, man. And then, and then the third, any... oh, oh, sorry. And then third part is um, I want to work in events. So okay. doing doing games and tournaments. Okay, and, that's what and, I was going to ask. Do you have, yeah. uh, I, it's like, do people think, does it get higher than the NFL? But do you have other things that you want to shoot? People ask me all yeah. the time, like, you still want to go shoot like big concerts? Like, do you ever shoot yeah. like Post Malone? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, do you still have things that you look at in the culture and in the world and go, oh man, I, I still, I, I hope one day I, I dream to shoot that one day. Um, big music festival, Super Bowl, um, you know, Daytona 500 or oh, World Series. Well, I've been to the World Series, but NBA Finals. Yeah. Uh, so you still want to shoot like tons of sports. You yeah, definitely. But I want that to be sort of something that I do on just really like just hobby want, stuff. Yeah, just, just sort of it's kind of in the case and kind of like Scratching on the weekends the and things yeah, you want, yeah, things you love that you want, you hope to shoot one day out right. of your portfolio. Yeah. Would you like to come shoot this? And and then I sort of pull pull yeah. the gear out and and and, and go do it. But I'm at uh, the point now. I kind of want to start to uh, mentor, influence, train. You know, kids got kids out of college. Give them the opportunity to be a creative, tell a story. I love um, how much you keep bringing in uh, like kids. Yeah. Like obviously, kids mean a lot to you. Yeah. Like your whole thing that you're building with the kids flag and everything. Yeah. And obviously you have kids, but yeah. I think when you have kids, you develop this uh, love for all like kids more yeah. than you probably might normally. Yeah. Like right now, my girl and I, like we're not 
in love with kids, you know, because yeah. we're <laughs> selfishly sounding. Yeah. But, you know, I, th I think it's really cool that you, when I said, what are your dreams over the next five years? The first thing you talked about was your, your whole kid flag football thing that you're putting yeah. together and what you're building there. I yeah. think that's super commendable. Yeah. Super, super awesome. And, Is it, uh, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have people, people yeah. like me mm -hmm. that took the time to invest in me and took the time to yeah. show me like, Hey, you, you can, whatever it is that you're dreaming that you want to do, you can do it. Yeah. And here's how I can help in my own little way. Exactly. You know what I mean? So like, I wouldn't be where I am, um, without people that invested their time and, sure. and volunteered and, mm -hmm. and was, was a, a positive black male role model for me. So sure. I definitely want to do the same thing and, and give back the way, any way that I can. And you already are. All right. So at this point, uh, I just want it one more time. I want to, uh, just give you mad respect and love for, for that. I think the fact that you've talked about kids so much is like, it's inspiring to me. Cause like I've done a lot of kids stuff with the yeah. Jags foundation. I've shot a lot of kid flag football. I've gone to high schools and middle school, even like little kid schools through, uh, from 2020 all the way till now, not even LCC related, just something that the Jaguars organization reaches out to me and I've gone, you know, player goes and reads to kids. I've done all that kind of stuff. And, um, I think, but once I think I have a, child of my own yeah i'll develop like this whole love for kids more yeah. than i really do I, I like being around them like i love yeah. shooting it's yeah we've talked about it yeah. love shooting kid flag football and stuff but the fact that you're you're so i think that speaks very highly about who you are as a person when you, you bring up you know the culture and good influences and being inspired and you were inspired and you want to inspire kids and definitely. and there's a lot of bad kids out there right now yeah so yeah, you sure. definitely need it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> TikTok and the world of social media is oh, killing man. our kids oh, in, in the worst way so they need good influence they need good role models definitely. so that's sick yeah so what what's uh How'd you get the nomadic partnership? How, how did that come about? Did they nomadic. reach out to you? Let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so in 2017, I discovered Peter McKinnon on YouTube. He only had about 50, 60,000 followers, okay. uh, subs on YouTube. Now okay. he has five point something million. He's wow. the biggest photographer on YouTube. He's huge, right? Wow. He's actually the face of Canon. One of the faces of Canon now too, you know, you go to the website yeah. and you see Peter McKinnon, like on the Canon website. That's amazing. right. And, uh, so nomadic, playing a part in that. So obviously Nomadic is partnered with him. Yeah. So a couple years ago, he promoted this brand Nomadic and was like, Hey, I'm going to make a bag specifically for photographers. Mm -hmm. It all started with like the little sling, like yeah. the little sling, just every detail about it was so practical and so dope. Mm -hmm. I had bought it. Mm -hmm. I waited. A, he had made YouTube videos promoting it. They had one model bag and it, everything about it was just so great. I was like, I need this bag, right? Mm -hmm. I want this bag gone through tons of bags. Um, and just had his little name signature on it, like mm -hmm. being such a big fan of him, you know? So, yeah. um, so, so the bag finally, it got done. Came, I loved it so much. I had the wife take a bunch of pictures of me. I did a bunch of videos on it, just always tagging them. They have a couple hundred K on it. So they have a pretty big following, uh, for photography backpacks and, and, uh, just what they do right now. They just started putting out clothes, uh, just all kinds of different stuff, like weatherproof clothes, things for good for shooters out in the world. And, uh, just being a huge fan of Peter McKinnon, I was like, man, I'm just going to keep tagging Nomadic and tag Peter McKinnon and just show them how much I love this bag and how, how it really has helped me. It's mm -hmm. changed my game a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And I genuinely mean that, you yeah. know, and I, without them ever even acknowledging me, I would actually type a post on Instagram talking about how this bat like promoting it for them for nothing like, yeah you know so finally someone did see my uh like my instagram how many times i've tagged them and saw my photos and like oh my gosh hey aaron and they followed me and they're like dude we love your everything you do we the whole team scrolled your instagram for like an hour we love what you do <laughs> nice. they said would you like to have a phone can we get a phone call with you let's have a meeting and i told them how peter mckinnon changed my life uh, peter mckinnon is the face of this brand right mm -hmm. he's the he's the face of this brand if for not him making the video i would never have bought the bag mm. um so i told them that that bag literally changed my life i took it uh i've taken it on tour with me Just love the bag but i they loved uh my story from how i transitioned from touring with rock stars in the music world through the pandemic to sports and now how mm. i got my job at the nfl i'm pretty sure they 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 made there's a teal little backpack down mm, there mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure they made that one specifically for me because i'm nice. such a diehard jag fan and they nice. made this like teal bag literally just for me and like my my jaguars like city fan base of kids and uh but anyway that's how i got 
collabed with them. Nice. I know that's kind of a long story. No, that's, that's, I love Peter McKinnon. That is sweet. He introduced man. me to the bags. That's they like they liked my story, and I still love the bag. They, I'm, I tell them, send me every prototype. I yeah. love trying it all out, and I'm I'm you know pretty uh, faithful too. Like I don't yeah. buy any other bags. Yeah. You know I'm not buying any other like think tanks or nothing. Yeah. Like I yeah, everyone yeah. knows I only rep Nomadic, Nomadic. True and uh, you know and I'm I am sponsored. It's nice. it's cool to say when your videos not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by yeah. this, and I say that on my YouTube videos. Yeah. But I am sponsored by Nomadic, and I'm really proud of it because it's nice. I waited a long time from yeah. through the Instagram and just everything I've done. I waited a long time for a company to really want to like have me as a, a, a sponsor. Know, or dope, someone you know and i don't have a huge following it's not like i have hundreds of thousands of followers you know yeah. but they like what i do and i wear the bag on the jags field and they like that that's dope man so, that's, yeah, and cool. I, every every creative knows that's like one of the number one struggles is finding the perfect bag oh my god i've gone through so, so many, many bags trying yeah. to find it now so my, my bag is from a competitor so i'm not going to mention what 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 brand it no, is. you can it's cool good one. peak design peak design is, okay. is my it's my it's my flow it's my jam sweet but uh okay. once i once i found the bag that was perfect for me mm -hmm. That was my thing. So and I, every I creator totally finds the bag that and yeah. that does work for them best. Right, right, right. I had told Nomadic this year better be the year that they come out with a hard case rolly. Right. And I said, listen, I need one of these. You guys don't have one. So you need to make one this year. And no. my next question is what um yes, what's I been your favorite interview. moment so far? My um, favorite moment? Just growing up being a, such a huge Jags fan. Oof. Yeah. So nine oh four happy hour gave me the first chance to go shoot a game. Nice. And uh the first time I walked out into the field just out there only as a kid up way up there and the second game i ever went to my whole life was actually getting to on walk the on the field nice it's the only second time i ever got to go in the stadium nice. that's why so that was my first moment my actual in-game moment is a cell phone clip okay okay all the big rigs don't matter okay all the beautiful portrait 1.285 millimeter all those shots are great yeah doesn't matter my favorite moment so uh, the Chargers game, Trevor threw four interceptions mm -hmm. and we're all walking around like us fans, me and Logan, like all these dudes are walking around just like we're down 28 to like, was it 28 to zero or something? Yeah, I think so. Something 28 like to that. Three. Yeah. It's just some crazy. Yeah. We're looking up at the scoreboard at ha almost halftime. Evan Ingram gets that touchdown right before halftime. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, there are a few touchdowns away, but this is not happening. Yeah. They made the comeback, right? Yep. But my favorite moment was the field goal that won the game yeah. right in the last second yeah like a few seconds left on the clock no overtime just a few seconds left i was behind trevor on the sideline mm. and he was squatted down holding hands with tyson campbell mm. they were like fucking holding hands yeah. right so uh when the kicker made the field goal and i always keep in the back of my mind when i got hired by when we went through orientation yeah remember when you went through or like the lcc orientation is yeah one of the highest view clips is not the field goal being made for the Packers, yeah, but reaction. the clip of Aaron Rodgers' reaction. Mm -hmm. So I knew that the field goal, every camera in the whole house, yeah. I always kept that in mind. Yeah. Every camera in the whole house is on the field goal kicker. Yeah. I just walked over all the way behind Trevor, and I literally just stood right behind him with my phone. Yeah. And when that kick went through, he took off running, and I took off running right behind him, and I filmed him run, his reaction of winning the game. And in the phone clip, there's a, photo a couple photographers falling down literally eating turt like literally eating it no and i stayed on my feet I f i'm really good i'm yeah. like ninja cat status yeah so like i follow trevor and i have his whole celebrate still on my on my phone to this day i have his whole celebration on my phone of and it's been shared so many times wow. by all you know whatever all of all the platforms it's still on youtube that you know, is still sick. being viewed all the time my phone clip of trevor just the reaction of him That's winning sick. that game that comeback yeah. his first playoff win Wow. You know, so that's my favorite moment for sure. That was an incredible game. So that, that would sure segue was. me to my next question. Let's go. Football related. How do you feel about the uh, recent transactions that Jaguars have made? Most notably. Okay, so we're going to end this podcast on just straight ball talk. Yeah, let's do it. That's, that's, why, that's how we talk. met. That's why yeah. we're here. Let's do it. That's why we're here. We both love football. Yeah. Um, I got to remind you one last time. I do love the Buccaneers. Yeah. I heard Jack fan, but I do love the Bucs. Yeah. Um. I'm, I'm stoked for Gabe Davis. I'm sad that we let Calvin Ridley go. I hope we pick up a number one receiver. Gabe Davis is a great receiver. Kirsch and Kirk, great receiver, but we still need that number one. It wasn't Brandon Ayuk as of news a few days ago. Maybe T. Higgins, Trevor's old teammate. We still need that number one, I feel like. But the uh, Eric Armstead from the uh, 49ers, mm -hmm. that was like uh, when we signed Calais Campbell. Mm -hmm. Just a huge move. I feel good about it. I'm a little on edge about, as a fan, you know, not as an NFL employee, but as a fan, I'm still a little on edge of like some of the moves that GM makes, but I respect Trent Bulky. 
I'm not going to say anything bad about him. You know, I work, excuse me, I work for the Jags. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for all that. Just get us the number one receiver and pr protect Trevor. That's my only thoughts. Okay. As long as we protect Trevor, because I do believe that Trevor has it. Okay. I do believe he has it. Some people may have given up on him, but now as officially as of Justin Fields the other day, yeah. from that draft class, he's the only starting quarterback now. Every other one, and I'll never forget. Yeah. Oh boy, it's in my phone. Did I have a screen record? I'll never forget when they said that uh, Zach Wilson and Mac Jones and uh, Justin Fields, they all said that those guys were all going to be better than Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Even though they're high out of their mind. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, I've seen Trevor move from me to you. Like, yeah. I've seen him. He has that that yeah. that everything about him. Everything, yeah, he has all Every qualities. single aura yeah. hits on every nose. Yeah. And I love... Uh, yeah, I love what they talk about every quarterback out of the draft. The next coming is Patrick Mahomes. Like every <laughs> single quarterback coming out of the draft is like the next big thing, right? Yeah. But I really do believe that Trevor's special. Okay. Non bias, non bias. And I'm very. You really do. Because like, like, when I you love post on social, like you, it'll just be like a random Wednesday. You'd be like, yo, I still believe in this dude. It'll be like yeah. a slide over at Trevor. Like, like you have to because a lot, of the, a lot of the world. There's a lot like, of negativity. Yeah. No, there's a lot of negativity around yeah. him. And I want him and. Not that he ever even sees like an Instagram post from me. He does follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he ever is healthier for him mentally. Probably stay off social media. Yeah. Sure, a yeah. lot of the guys, right? Yeah. Maybe he sees it once in a while, but I still want him to know that, like, even not outside of the fan base, like, we still believe. I want him to know that I believe in him, even yeah. if I'm a nobody, even if my opinion doesn't matter at all. I totally believe in the guy. Okay. So, and okay. who knows though? Football is a finicky world. He could be yeah. not a Jaguar in two seasons. Yeah. It's a crazy, it's really it crazy. It is. I mean, do we think that Baker Mayfield was going to just go off and then get a contract? <sighs> right. So let's reverse the role. Right. Are you right. stoked about the free agency? Are you stoked about Baker's contract? So me and the other, Shoot other shooters three have three seasons. Uh, yeah. Me and, me and the shooters have a little group chat and we've okay. been monitoring free agency since, since the season ended, yeah. we were like, Hey, these guys are up for contracts. Mm -hmm. You know, what are we going to do? How's the front office going to handle um, sort of like dispersing the, the cap room or whatever the case may be. And I, I, I love what we did with, with Mike. I feel like we got him on a, a, a very um, reasonable deal. I think Baker's deal is reasonable given what he did last year. Um, he had to break him off a little bit of something because, you know, he did lead you to the yeah, second round. I think he, he was deserved, a pro bowler. He deserved it. Oh, just the, the way to see the way that, that the city and the fan base Reacted. just slowly, because it, it wasn't it at was, first. No, it was a slow It wasn't at, cause it, for sure. at first. It was sort of like, is it going to be trash or is it going to be Baker? I mean, and then slowly you just start to see how he walks in the building every day. Mm -hmm. The confidence, the way he plays the game, the energy that he that he, he feeds off beast. the guy. Just to see the whole fan base gravitate mm -hmm. towards this guy, it was like amazing to watch. Like he's, he's the real deal. The stats and go yeah. by the end of the season, right. he actually had a better year than Tom's last season. Right. When right, you right, look right. at the stats, yeah. you would have Tom Brady back a thousand times, right? Yeah. You'd, you'd literally have TV back a thousand times. Yeah. But Baker, this past season, Baker literally had better stats, yep. more touchdowns to Mike Evans. Yep. After you see a few of those bombs, you start really believing. Yeah. And yeah. I hate that these teams give up on these quarterbacks so fast nowadays. Right. It's totally changed to when we were growing up. Yeah. But like I was just listening to Rich Eisen yesterday, I think, while I was like making lunch or something. I listen to I listen to Pat McAfee, Rich Eisen, all mm -hmm. these all these talking heads. I listen yeah. to them all the time. Yeah. But Rich Eisen was talking to Kurt Warner Mm -hmm. like on one of these past days on the show talking about how they just give up on these guys so quickly and look yeah. baker he finally got a contract all these seasons later yeah from the browns to the yeah. to the uh panthers to the rams yeah. where he really shined with the rams for like a couple games mm -hmm. just showing that if i have a little bit better coaching and players around me and right. some belief here i can still go off right i mean how old is he i don't know but i mean how old could he be yeah maybe 20 28 29 i want to say or is yeah. he 20, 20, 29 something like either that. way he's got yeah. the energy of a young guy who's yeah. gonna definitely still dominate. I mean, I 100% believe that they. We'll we'll see how Kirk Cousins does in Atlanta. Atlanta but I yeah. still I still think the Tampa the has, South is gonna be interesting. They have, it's gonna be very AFC interesting. and NFC South is gonna be very interesting it is, next year. It is. Our division just went took a left turn from being the worst right to like the best, yeah. one of the best. Yeah, obviously not the best. I'm looking forward to seeing dude, Trevor against CJ for that's gonna years be crazy, to come. That's going to be amazing. Right. And I'm immediately a CJ fan too. Yeah. Because he's got that whole like Patrick Mahomes, Michael Jordan like aura about him. Yeah. And uh, he did so, he broke so many records as a rookie mm -hmm. that like I bought cards. Nice. <laughs> I bought rookie cards. 
he's an investment. Like, Hell yeah. he's now he's turned into a full on event. We're not, we don't, I don't gamble. Yeah. Obviously, we're not allowed to gamble yeah. for the NFL. Yeah. But I do collect cards. I think okay. it's a fun little hobby that I'm allowed to do. Nice. And it's still fun. Yeah. And you know what? If 10 years, a CJ Stroud rookie card of mine. Yeah does anything for my life then cool if yeah. not i don't care right right, right it's right, just right. fun even Pass the wife down. even even the wife has gotten into it with me nice. the past uh like few months like we'll be at target and i'm just like i'm just gonna buy these couple packs of cards yeah just see if i because it's cj's rookie packs yeah. like any cj stroud cards worth at least 50 100 bucks or more right now nice. and uh she was actually getting into it with me for a minute we'd sit at the kitchen island she'd be opening packs with me she's like is this guy good nice yeah, it's a little fun it's just a fun That's little sweet, hobby man. but uh sweet. yeah i'm super Pumped for the Bucks, super yeah. pumped for the Jags. Hell yeah, you know. Hell yeah. So what? What, what about here? you, man? What's What's the um? What are the goals for you in the future? Like 10, 15, more 15? zeros in my bank account. Yeah, more yeah. zeros. Yeah, and and I don't want it to seem like that's all I care about. Yeah. But my wife and I really, really are we're like addicted to the feeling of not having to think about our bills. Yeah. We're addicted to thinking about not caring about how much we spend at Costco. Yeah. And it's such a hard bridge to go over in our economy yeah in our life yeah like it's changed us from 2020 to now like it's changed us so much the way we look at money in mm -hmm. the world and and paying attention to i'm not going to get into politics ever on yeah. this podcast yeah, yeah, yeah but i'm very heavily opinionated yeah, in it yeah. and i i i just want the country to flourish and yeah we we do everything uh thinking about obviously the integrity of, of people and we believe yeah. in God, we believe mm -hmm. in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just care. I I'll be doing every move I make. We make with our wallet. Yeah, it's yeah. just, uh, it's really important for, for us in this life. You know, oh, yeah. I really care about where we're going to be in five years financially. Yep. We just want to not stress about paying bills and it's just what's important. And when we go to have a child, yeah. it's so expensive and you know, yeah. it's so expensive to have a kid and yeah. raise a kid and yeah. everything, even going through birth and all of it, everything is so costly. Yeah. And I just think that we made it this far, uh, building, you know, building our, little bit of our savings and just like building our life to where yeah. now like i think that we when we have a child we'll be able to stress less a little yeah. less about it but okay. we're not the kind of people that don't want a kid at all and yeah. just you know selfish no we definitely yeah. want a child yeah and uh but money is important and hell yeah in our economy yeah. got to have multiple streams of income and yep. got to care about money and yep. we just rule our life through our wallet a little more than our feelings yeah and i know that set might sound a little weird sometimes but yeah. and i do have you know, sympathy and feelings for all the things in the world. But when it comes yeah. to just making money, it's just really important. Yeah. You know, and Facts. it's important as I come from nothing. Yeah. You know, little yeah. crappy side of town in Jacksonville. Yeah. No money at all. You know, mom ordering me a pizza because I had no money at 21, you know? Wow. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know about your background growing up as a kid, but yeah. um, when we when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you thought it might have been, you know, from like a middle class, maybe just a kid who got a bunch of tattoos from a middle class. Yeah. Kid. You know, <laughs> nah, I'm from yeah. kind of like a, a uh, I look like what I look like because I'm from the opposite kind of. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, not any kind of prison tattoos or nothing yeah. crazy like that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, growing up on a side of town when me and my friends hung out at a tattoo shop and I wanted to play music and be a rock star. So nice. I'm covered in tattoos and I did spend some money on it. And I also got a lot just hooked up like just for, yeah. for free, you know, and I'm grateful. Nice. It made me, it makes me who I am, you know? Right. But you, yeah, you're I still, mean, you're still a rock star just in a different way. Exactly. Like we yeah, talked yeah, yeah. about earlier. And yeah. so are you. Yeah. you know? Appreciate you, man. But, uh, but yeah, money's important. Yeah. Money's Big important time. and Big you time. can make a lot of money creating yeah. content. You can. You and uh, I'm so glad we got to have a nice conversation. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I do care about this podcast a lot. Hell yeah. Man. So I thank you for being on the Creative Locker Podcast. For sure. Is there anything you want to sign out and say to anyone who listened to the end of this thing? Anything at all? Shout out to the whole LCC community, everybody, yes. all the creatives in, in, in professional sports. Yes. Uh, shout out to everybody, man. We know how hard you grind. Yep. And uh, you do it for the love. So. Yes. Shout out to y'all. And I'm going to link all of Michael's, uh, obviously his Instagram. I don't know if you even have TikTok, but I'll link whatever you want linked yeah. underneath. You guys make yeah. sure you check out and follow Michael. And uh, he's going to post more. He's yeah. promising me yes. right now he's going to yes. start posting more. Yes. And uh, appreciate you guys listening to the end. I appreciate you being here, dude. You, man. Yes, I, sir. I have so much love for you, man. Yeah, Our man. friendship Likewise. means a lot to me. All right, here we go. One, two, two three. Peace. Yeah.